TT dudes at the top of the plateau. Here we go, Jenny. And we got Box. Jenny and Box are going at it. We got forks on forks here, folks. Whoa! And Box throws his fork to give it up, and he is down. TTRGB for the win. Woo! <laughs> Let's go! Let's go, everybody! Wow. Wow, we had some intense battles there at the end. 5-0, oh, baby, the chat, back to back. Look out, man, look out. What's going on, everybody? Happy Wednesday, happy hump day, Mike, Mike, Mike. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? Oh, man, we got another fun one in store for you guys today. Boy, wow, a lot of stuff going on today, man. Woo-hoo-hoo. A lot of fun stuff out there and everything like that. And luckily, hopefully, everybody will uh, be joining us here soon, especially since the Johnny Depp trial is more or less... Uh, been decided so everybody's no longer have to watch that man what an interesting situation 9 p.m in scotland and you're here rob you were the best rob thank you so much rob from across the pond my friend it's always good to see you always good to see you that was a nice little battle you had there with box at the end i appreciate you uh jousting it out there uh <laughs> both of you with pitchforks uh, uh for whatever reason it was hilarious i lo i loved every bit of it man soap opera not trial it totally i mean i think that's more content or movie stuff than what everybody's been looking for with all the other stuff that's been coming out they'd still they'd want to watch that i i don't know i don't know some people get into it man some people get into it but we're here today's wednesday welcome to thermal take live of course i'm your host thermal mike and with me as always my main bot man thermal steve what's up steve Running that new 13.3.7 BIOS update. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like one of my favorite BIOSes, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what's up, Jenny? What's up? Rob, DJ, SRAG, what's going on? Hey, hey, hey. And of course, thank you uh, to my followers that we got some followers here already, as well as any throwing on that Prime sub again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys. Captain Jack, Jack Spara. Cotton Jock Spara. We'll see. Why is the rum always gone? Cotton Jock Spara says so. <laughs> I'm going to have to watch the movies this weekend or something now. I, I don't know what I'm going to do without my depth fix. Well, we could do it right now with the uh, Iron Box coming in with that hydrate. Hey! Sippy cup. You know what time it is. Dude, thanks, Box, man. I appreciate you. You are a box. I know. And this is a drink. Mm. Sippity cup. It's uh, definitely not rum. It is definitely not rum. It is always water, <laughs> right? Yes. This is why we don't stream for eight hours. It's definitely water. Yes. <laughs> it's definitely water. Woo! Okay. Oh, and we got. I can't check Discord right now. Sorry. But somebody wants me in Discord. I missed something. What's this? What's, What's this? this? Hey! Hey! Who's some of those? Go zero den zero W. Five kids are anniversary. Yeah. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? Good now. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. That's a tier two sub, by the way, bro. 12 months, bro. Thank you so much. You, we don't. You don't have to, my friend. We appreciate you. Good luck later on uh, the giveaway. Appreciate you, appreciate you. Do we, do we get an anniversary? One year. The what? Yeah, he has a 12-month sub badge now. Yeah, do we get a, a, a an anniversary dinner? Oh. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Little wine and dine. Does it have to be a mega pint, though? Uh, well, I mean, in honor of Johnny Depp, it should be. It should be a mega pint and dinner. And dinner. They should just change the terminology, right? Where is all the rum? <laughs> 12 months though, man. Enjoy that official one year badge, my friend. Thank you so much. You earned it. As well as some of the other ones we got going on too. Cause yeah, we've been streaming for over a year now and uh, we actually got some more stuff coming. Year and a half badge is going to be coming up. Yeah, it looks nice, doesn't it? Yeah. Appreciate know, you, man. See you guys back. DJ, Sreg. Right? Box, of course, Box. Sh Grim Shifter. Oh, it's good to see you guys. Oh, Mystify is even Mystify. in the chat. Can't do Baja Blast. Mike will put it in the cooler. <laughs> I 
me. Steve that will just Steve will just steal it from me. I'll just put it in my nice little ice chest, and Steve will be like, "This is mine." My precious. <laughs> it's just like seriously, dude. You're not gonna. <laughs> you won't be able to keep it away from him. It, it'd just be like, yeah, it'd be like, um, uh, Lord Here's of the Rings. Just back, my precious. My precious, my precious. <laughs> yes. It's mine, It's not yours. That that is exactly what that would sound like. Yes. <laughs> Where's my father? Hey, you my precious. We might we might be getting some of that. You know, it's uh, funny we just bring up Lord of the Rings out of nowhere, right? But um, there's a new game they got working on. It's called Gollum. It's coming out in like September or whatever. I got my eye on it. It is. Big yeah. fan. Big fan of Lord of the Rings. And uh, yeah, we'll have to see, dude. We'll we'll have to see. Where's my? Oh, I get my TT dude in here. Bold strategy cotton. It is. It's a bold strategy cotton. <laughs> Yeah, Look at love off, that man. movie. Love that movie so much. We're going to be talking about that today with our RGB as we not only are going to be going through to tell you guys about what you get. Oh, actually, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, yeah, with all that other stuff aside and everything like that, let's go ahead and actually get started with the stream here for today. So today we're going to be talking all about RGB. Uh, what's the Thermal Take RGB all about? How does it work? You know, what do you get? What's the difference in the different things that you get? How do you install it? How do you set it up? How does the software work? And then of course, if it's broken thermal mic, how do I fix it? You know, that's going to be probably the tough one and going to be the fun one towards the end here is I have some controllers that I've, for the most part, purposely broken. And we will be going through seeing how we can fix it or at least give you guys a process of elimination on what to check for first before having to unfortunately head to like something like an RMA. So we got a lot going on today. Sit back and relax with us here. Thermal Take Live with me and Steve. And uh, we'll be having some fun. And of course, if you guys don't know already, um, my man Steve here is a mean waffler. And um, he is just the master breakfast maker. And he will have something special for you guys later. I know he's mixing up something super special like he always does every week. So stay tubed for that. If you guys want to uh, join in on the fun, all you got to do is have a verified Twitch account. Click that follow button for us. And if you want to give us some more support, we'll give it back to throw in that subscription. We'll give you some extra chances. Good luck to everybody. U.S. and Canada apply, just so you guys know. All right. Check, All check, right. and check. Check to the check with the checkity check checks. Good luck, everybody. You have to pretend your W7 is a W4. That's because you are not using the W7's controller that it came with. That's an easy one, my friend. But it still works. It just looks different. But it still works. And if it you broke it, works. that's great. We're I mean, that's not great, but it's a great thing to talk about because we'll be able to help you with how to fix it. You know, you got a problem with the controller? You got a warranty from us. All you got to do is call us. And I know it's a lot to call or message or ticket and all that stuff. So we'll try to see if we can break the ice a little bit on that too and go over that as well as far as a nice little refresh on what's going on with our, our you know, how you contact us here in the US at Thermaltake. If you've got a problem with something or you just have a question, you know? So, but narrowing it down and doing all that stuff and everything is always, um, you know, it's just the name of the game when it comes to RGB. And there's a lot of systems that are out there Definitely more uh, that give more features are always going to give you necessarily more problems. But with more things, there's always more things to go wrong. It's like a DIY liquid cooled system. So we always got to take a look at some of that stuff and uh, see what we can do to narrow it down. And hopefully today we'll be able to help you guys out getting your RGB all set up like I have here with all of my fun little controllers and getting everything all set up just like this. And then of course, if something does go wrong, hopefully we'll be able to show you guys how to fix a couple of things too. All right, so yeah, let's go ahead. We'll get started here. I got a lot of stuff going on. But yeah, no, it's unfortunate when stuff like that goes down, man. Um, you know, it could be, just be a physical thing. It's definitely gonna be something we will be talking about as well, which is like, you know, how everything kind of functions and works um you know with the software and thing but we do got to start somewhere and i think uh that is definitely going to be uh something very important for us 
I got like a, I got my little cheat sheet right here. And um, let me take a quick little sip and uh, we're going to get started with what you get. Steve, you got to say anything? Gonna throw, you going to throw something in there, Stevie, before uh, we get started? It just works. You know, we hope that it's going to just work for you. Nine out of 10 people, it does just work. But some changes, some comes up, some upgrades. There's a lot of things that can go on. And um, you got me here as your RGB certified expert to try to help you. So hopefully this will help you out if we're live and or if you're watching this later. Um, feel free to add any comments or questions down um, in any of the videos later on. And of course, if you are hanging out with us here today, feel free to ask us live. We'll take a look. We'll dive in on it and see what we can do to help you and figure out what could be going on or at least point you in the right direction. All right. So what is TTRGB? What do you get? What's the difference? How do you put it together? How do you set it all up and configure it? How's the software work? And then, of course, if I have a problem, Thermal Mike, what do I do? What's the best practice? Where do you start first, you know? And at what point do you think you need, like, an RMA and everything like that? So let's go ahead and get started with the basics. Level one, first step, what do you get? So let's jump on over here. So I got a nice uh, RGB system all set up right here that we're going to be using to go through and demo some things for you. But first and foremost, we need to talk a little bit about all the things that come in the box, why it matters, what you get, and of course, what it's for. So let's go ahead and get some things kind of mixed out here, all right? We'll get you guys some close-ups, we'll dive on in, and if you guys have any questions along the way, feel free to let us know. I even got a bad controller here too that we'll be talking about later as well, which I think will be quite interesting. Be quite, quite interesting. Okay. So if I open this thing up, I don't void warranty. Um, as far as like if you're opening like a blocks and everything, I mean, you leave that question very dangerously open, by the way, just to let you know. <laughs> but that's why we're here with the questions, you know? All right, so I got this. We got that. Where do you start? Well, let's take you back down memory lane, okay? Right here. This is the Ring 12. Now, this right here is an oldie. It's an oldie. This is before software. This was back when we had our ring fans announced. We did a single color already, but that was locked into a fan with only a single color. This was the first configurable RGB set in a 120 fitment. And this basically gave us a little three button controller option that we had right here and it allowed us to control the 256 colors. This was before the birth of addressable LED and how it flooded into the market to what you guys see today as far as the way RGB has come. It, it, it's been definitely a long, long way. And for a lot of our TTRGB systems, we've been upgrading throughout the years as well. So for a lot of you that are either getting our configurations today, or maybe you've had some of our products already and you're looking to upgrade down the road, and you know, trying to mix and match different components, different things from us here at Thermaltake in our vast ecosystem. I mean, bro, we, we got a lot of stuff now with TTRGB. We got a lot of stuff with TTRGB. A lot of that stuff is all on our website. We'll be talking and showing you guys a little bit of that later on in the stream, um, going over like where you get the software side of things, as well as uh, some of the feature sets and all that stuff there too. So today, or right now, we're just gonna be focusing on hardware. So yeah, Ring 12, man. Bro, Steve, this this really this really takes me back, dude. This really takes me back. You man. know, dare I say, the first fan with RGB in it, we're not gonna even say RGB, but lighting in it, in a ring style design. Yep, yep, yep. We, we claim the world's first RGB in a ring before software and all that, and then um, I'm pretty sure when our Plus Series stuff came out, uh, we were ahead of the game there as well. Once we got into software and everything, boy, our software has come a long way too. There's been a lot of feature updates, a huge change from version one to version two. So we're going to be covering all of that and everything here on the stream. And of course, for all you guys at home, welcome. Welcome to Thermal Tech Live. Thank you for being a part and enjoying a little bit of your day here with us. If you're hanging out, got something going on in the background, you got to let us play. Either way, just kind of be listening in. We're going to be doing a giveaway later on during the stream. You don't want to miss that. 
Um, so, uh, yeah, don't forget about that, all right? I'll stop talking about the giveaway stuff. I think you guys all know. Oh, mm. yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, let's, uh, let's dive on in here. Let's dive on in here. So, first and foremost, what are you going to get out of the box? So, with my... With my setup, usually you're gonna get like an accessory box like this. Then you're also gonna get a variety of fans. So without, you know, dealing with the box and all the manual and all that stuff, I am gonna be ending up with about three fans in a pack because we sell these in a three pack option. I'm gonna get three little packs of screws like this. And then these are gonna have both the, the long screws for mounting to a radiator, as well as the coarse screws for securing it to a case. You can absolutely use the screws that come with the case for mounting it and everything. And the one thing to mention here specifically is with AIOs. Now, this is going to be more or less a default or generic screw that would mount to a radiator using the fan, where it passes through the fan like so, so that it can mount to another surface like a radiator going into that kind of position when we do like AIOs, custom liquid cooling and stuff where you have like this guy right here, which you guys probably know, you use for mounting onto the back of cases and such. Well, if you have an AIO, we do recommend to not use our screws and actually use the screws that came with the AIO, even if you're planning to use our fans with the AIO. And the reason why I say that is because the threading on this that comes with the fans might not be the same as the ones with the radiator. So. One of the first mistakes you can make is using the screws that come with the fans when say your radiator that you have for your AIO or even your custom liquid cooled setup could also include screws because hey, us at Thermaltech, we cover and carry all the screws in our AIOs as well as with our radiators. So you do get the mounting hardware for the fans in all of our radiator kits anyways, but we know not everybody does that. But again, the number one thing you don't want to do is if you're using an AIO, use the screws that came with the AIO. It's the correct thread and size for that radiator, as well as the length, which is another thing that's important because, you know, sometimes I guess you get over thread it and stuff like that. And if they're going to include it with the radiator, always use those. These are only like a backup plan. And I hope that helps anybody out there with that. The core screws, of course, are universal. They work just about any which way possible, so you don't really gotta worry about those. All right, now you're gonna get fans in the box. Now we do a variety of fans um, from our ring to our ring duo, our ring trio, and our ring quad. Now I have a variety here. This is gonna be, let's see where I get this set up. We got our duo. So this means it's got two RGB LEDs, one being the outer circle, and then of course the center hub. Then we got the trio fan upgrading up to three of a kind. And this is gonna give us an LED ring on both sides. And it's also gonna give us an LED hub in the middle, allowing us to have three different zones that can be controlled separately, addressable, connecting only to the controller. And then of course, the big daddy, our quad fan. Now this is a 48 LED four ring Fan. Now this has two rings on the outside and two rings on the center hub. All four are controlled separately and they are all connect up directly to our TT RGB controller. Woo! Okay. So what did we learn there from that? Now we're gonna offer a variety of different fans in different packages. Your fans Let's are gonna go. be sold a in either follower. a single in. or a all three right. pack. And it's all going to be up to you as far as how you buy and plan for what you're going to need in your system. And the real Jakes, thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate you. Oh, wait, wait. quick, uh, a little addendum here to the ring quads, uh, 54 LEDs. Oh, it's 54. I'm so sorry. Thank you for the correction. 54 LEDs. It's a lot of LEDs. Let's just say that. And uh, yeah, I think Mystify said his best. You know, we are, our fans are the Lord of the Rings. One ring to rule them all. You know, back when we were launching this product, I wanted to use that so bad. <laughs> all that was going in my head was that, man. Big token fan. Okay. Love it. Love it, love it, love it too. Now, with the fans that you see we've been showing here, you're going to get mostly in a three-pack for the fans. It's also going to include a controller. 
You're gonna get a controller little box that looks like this. We'll go into detail on that. You're going to get some cables in another little bag. You're gonna have a big cable like this. It's gonna be our USB cable that's gonna connect to our USB header. You're gonna get a power cable. Yes, this is Molex. And yes, you wanna make sure you connect it all the way, making sure all four pins are connected directly in, especially on both sides. And of course, an optional What's link this? cable. What's this? Burr, 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 burr. New sub alert. Mick oh, Will's entire bag is. Thank you so much for the sub, man. Appreciate you. Thanks so much. What's this? Oh, What's this? Oh my God. Burr, 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 burr. Oh my God. New I looked at the wrong cup. Carabana, grab it. Oh, oh my. Oh my. What's this? What's this? Oh my God. New sub alert. Darkness, Darkness Muda. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it? What's this? What's this? Caboose, my friend. Oh, thank you so much. We don't, we, we are not worthy. We are not worthy, my friend. Thank you. What's this? Thank you. Thank you. That's crazy. You guys enjoy those uh, five tier one subs there from Caboose. Give Caboose a big thank you in the chat for that. Um, enjoy those emotes. Hey, enjoy the extra chances to win um, later on in the raffle because you guys now have even more options. So a uh, big shout out and lots of love to Caboose for that. So chat, do your thing. Yeah. Let them know how much Absolutely. you can. Let them know. Appreciate We're about you. to uh, get oh. started on that waffle Woo. time. So yeah, you guys better thank Caboose for them extra entries. And then we also got a hydrate from Jenny. Sorry, I've been talk to talk, RGB, RGB. Pump it, spice rings. Let's go. Well, Mike, you can never say enough about RGB and how perfect it is. Oh man, there's, everyone should have it. We have so much RGB too. There's so much. What's there's this? so much cooling. What's this? So burr, burr, many burr, things burr, that are going on. Oh, no. Mech Zero R. Oh my gosh, Rob just What's gifted this? five What's tier this? one subs as well. Oh New my goodness, and they're not worthy. -A -R -D. You, guys are, gosh. you guys are amazing. Dude, like almost Man. every. Like, Dude, what's this? What are we doing? What's this? Rob got jealous. <laughs> Jace 2010. Dude, Rob, thank you so much, my friend, all the way across. What's I appreciate this? you. What's this? And uh, you guys as well. New uh, definitely Pickle give Rob some love jar. for those uh, extra entries that you guys got going on in there, too, man. Appreciate what's this? You. What's this? Man, we got to get some people in here. You guys got to get in Easy here. Underscore, you got to let underscore. people know. We got giveaways. We got stuff to give out. Let them in. Share the links, guys. We yeah, could, yes. If we could get if we can get to 100, we were going to do two giveaways. Two giveaways. Anytime. Even if it's one little second. I just want to take the time to say that uh, we are actually very, very close to a hype train. We are. Ooh. I don't think we've actually gotten this close before. Ooh, oh, I see that too. Mind. You're all right. Yeah, I, I've, I've we, not we, seen that pop up. But we don't offer like bits. We don't offer, you know, we don't want any donation stuff or anything like that. It's just the sub stuff. Okay, guys. So don't go too crazy. All right. We want to yeah. give to you guys. We want to give to you guys. I can't stress that enough. Okay. Okay, so back on it. So you're going to get a box. Your box is going to have more or less three fans in it. We sell these fans for the most part in a three pack, but you will see a five pack option as well as single packs. And we'll talk about a lot of that. But first, let's just start with the basics. And that's going to be your three ring pack fan pack. Okay, so you're going to get the three fans. Check. Controller. Check. USB cable. Now this is gonna be a USB header cable that got to connect to the motherboard. So you're gonna need a free USB 2.0 internal header that's gonna plug into there. So like if you're using one for the case and you got something else going on or maybe you got one free, uh, this works. You can definitely get a hub. We do recommend you get a higher end hub, not one of the cheap PCB hubs for safety reasons, obviously. But if you do need it, there are hubs out there if you need more ports. Either way, you connect this up to your motherboard. It's gonna give you two micro USBs out for a variety of your TT RGB ecosystem products. And then of course, you're gonna get your power cable for the connector. We recommend using the power cable that comes with the connector. Don't use an adapter. Don't split the power. Yes, it's Molex. We understand that it, um, it's been tried and true. I think the biggest thing that we talked about this even a long time ago was that Molex secures the connection a lot more solid. It doesn't disconnect as easy as SATA does. 
granted when you're doing all your cable management stuff can get mixed around back there that's why i always stress to make sure everything works before you do your cable management i love to say that as much as i possibly can and then of course the link cable now this is the cable that is optional you don't have to use it but if you are using more than one box because maybe you have a variety of fans and you want to sync them together versus using the two cables for you know a little bit of cable management you know, keep them next to each other and stuff this is a very convenient item and the other thing you always have to consider is that this can be defective just as much as this 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 rgb can definitely be a lot so we hope that today will be able to help you feel a little bit better about your TTRGB. And if you do have some problems, our tips and tricks that we're gonna be showing you along the way should hopefully help get you back up and running. And of course, keeping your system cool. Okay, so this Rob is fair. I to let you know something too, by the way. Ah. Uh -huh. Molex per connection to PSU. Yes, so, and, and power supplies will vary on that as far as what you're looking at. Sometimes you'll have a power supply that have four Molexes on it, or three, depending on the wattage. And you know, when you're planning all of this stuff out for your RGB and you're thinking about your PCIe cable connections, you're thinking about your EPS and your 24 pin, or you're thinking about those amazing sleeved cables that you wanna buy to dress up your PC and just make it one of a kind, always consider your RGB too. It's gonna need a good amount of juice, especially if you're gonna be dealing with a 54 single fan LED this is really going to push a lot of stuff out there now yes you can run five quads on a controller no problem but you do not want to run multiple quad controllers on one rail and or in conjunction with like diy lcs configurations you got your pump for your d5 you really don't want that tied into the same rail so plan for that with your power supply power supplies are pretty serial ata heavy now not as much for the molex so it's always something to think about SATA connections are solid. Hey, what happened to my J drive? I know, exactly. Um, it, you know, and, and the way SATA <laughs> is, well, because it's a five pin versus the four pin and how that kind of transcribe, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting how a lot of that works. We have been talking for a while about a way to, you know, do Let's we have go. to have a controller? A new follower, or in. talking oh, about yeah. other things with not necessarily about a new controller, but a different way to connect it versus, you, you know, using USB. So it's a lot of other stuff like that. Uh, Sam's new. Thank you so much uh, for the follow. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. And welcome, welcome to Thermal Take Live, where it just works. And yes, good. Now most of our Thermal Take power supplies are single rail units. Single rail has been a more popular, solid, stable type of solution, I would say, in the market for several years. It used to be multi rail because they couldn't get enough juice, but they figured that out a long time ago. And most all power supplies, at least the higher end ones, are all single rail units, and they're the best way to go. I would personally prefer and recommend single rail power supplies for my setup, if you ask me. Absolutely, I second that recommendation. Single 12 volt rails are the most solid ones. Go for that. Don't let the people marketing sell that dual rail stuff and do your research. Do your research. 100%. And uh, hello from Sam Snood. Welcome. Welcome. Hey. To live, where it just works again. Now, on this, let me bring this in so you guys can see this a little better. All right, let's bring this on in here. Show you guys a little bit more in regards. Now, diving in on the installation and what you get out of the box, you're going to get a nice little breakdown. Don't lose this because it's a nice little cheat sheet for you, especially later on after you've done all of your cooling, whatever you're going to be doing, you're building a PC, it could take a while. You know, this is going to be something you're going to do later. It's not going to be one of the first things that you're going to do for the most part, but this can give you a nice little breakdown of what you get in the box. This is gonna show you the configurations. This is something that's very important here with the dip switch. Now, this is a feature we have on the controllers. And over here, you can see the different patterns for What's each this? of What's the this? numbers. Bam, 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 so this is pretty bam, crazy how this is going. Hey, Parks B Parks. Hi. Hello. B Parks, thank you so much for coming in with a tier one sub for three months. Hello. What's up, what B Parks? Hello. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? So then we're going to have a variety of dip switches, and then these are going to be able to show you number one, number two, number three. This is how we're going to have the software understand 
which one of these matters it's gonna this is how we're gonna be able to flip the switches on these and then what combination is gonna give you what number and how that's gonna pass through to the software. This is how we're able to offer such a huge expandability, being able to allow you to run several fans with water blocks, with LED strips, with other LED strips, and then incorporate other blocks for both CPU and GPU, all the way down to RGB fittings. There is a lot of stuff that we have, and you wanna make sure that you have everything set up right too. So little thing in the box that you get for that, we're gonna have our fans, we're gonna have our connection here. Let's just go ahead and take this apart now as we're just still kind of going over the what you get part. All right. So now as you can see, this is a nice long cable. I like this especially because this is gonna have to pass through to the front of your system and plug into the motherboard. And then this longer cable allow you to come back through the back of the case and uh, one of the features, one of the features that I like especially about this is that you get two of them off. So you at least get an option for two different kind of areas. So like if I have my system like this, I got fans in the front, I got fans on the top, fans or cooling in the back like that. I could run one cable here and I could run one cable here and then basically kind of have it split up so I can put the controllers where I want to, not where I have to, because this was too short or because this was, you know what I mean? So it gives you a little bit of flexibility for your cable management. It's a big deal. There's a lot back there that you're going to have to learn how to stuff. And I'll be showing you that too here with uh, the divider case too. Let me make sure I'm keeping up with my chat. You guys are amazing, dude. Oh my gosh. And Stevia, you want yep. to talk a little bit about the giveaway stuff? I saw some people asking questions. Absolutely. Yeah. So actually, why don't we just go ahead and get started? Batter's ready anyway. Hey, Let go for it, it, man. Go for it. Yeah. So uh, for those of you just joining in now, uh, every week, Wednesdays, 1 o'clock, we run our Waffle Time, which is our giveaway open to U.S. and Canada residents uh, to enter. All you'll need to do is type exclamation waffle when the giveaway is live, guys. Not quite yet. Uh, to be entered for a chance to be selected to be the chosen one. What is Ooh, the chosen one? The chosen likely. one is the winner of the giveaway who's going to get a chance to spin the wheel of mystery prizes, and we're going to get to see what the winner's going to get. So with that all in mind, with that all in mind. All in mind. All, all of it. in mind. Let's go ahead and get started, guys. Waffle time is now live, running for 30 minutes. You guys know what to do. Exclamation mark waffle in the chat. Uh, I know we aren't open globally just yet. We're still working on that, guys. So please bear with us. We do want to bring these uh, giveaways out globally, but there's, you know, hurdles and stuff we got to go through. Once we get that, you know, settled out, we'll start opening it globally. In the meantime, US and Canada, if you guys are in here, you know what to do. I think a lot of it's going to have to do, too, with how you guys help us spread the word. The more people we have on the channel, the more stuff we can do, the more we can give back. Spread the word. Help us out. Share it with a friend, family member. Have them jump in here. Again, all you have to do is follow in order for a chance to win. It costs you nothing. A Twitch account is free. And hey, if you have Amazon Prime and you got that free Prime sub or you don't even know what that is, Twitch offers or well i guess amazon offers twitch one free sub every single month don't let amazon keep that free money give it to a streamer like thermal take live or one of your other what's favorite this? streamers what's this give it to what you got but you got one free one every month man don't Vortex. forget about that Vortex coming in with that twitch prime thank you guys so much whoa look at that and getting those entries in guys mike 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 what day is it mike Super Woo. easy to do. Should see a little option right there. It is absolutely free. And all it does is give you one more extra, uh, gives you two more extra chances to win. So good luck. Good luck. All right. All right. That's like. Okay. So cables and everything, as far as how a lot of this stuff goes, let's dive back in. Let's dive back in here. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Now, right here, I have one of our controllers. This, there are many like it, but this one is mine. <laughs> but actually, that one's mine. Sir. <laughs> oh, oh, I am sorry. I am sorry. Don't break it. Here is another controller. Let me just. Oh, oh, make oh by this. the way, by the way, yeah, yeah, by yeah. the yeah. way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. How dare us miss that freaking guy saying, Hi, TT fam. Hello. Hey, that Love freaking guy. What's up, my man? Thank you so much. 
Thank you so much. Good luck. Get those entries in. Exclamation mark waffle, everybody. So right here, give you a nice, simple idea on the differences here. Now, this is a TT quad controller. This controller right here works with our quad fan specifically, but is also backwards compatible with everything else. Now, this right here is a non TT quad controller or an older design controller that you might have had on a ring duo or even a ring plus for that matter or an old water block like a W4 or even an old GPU block like a 1080 Ti RGB block that we had. B Park's coming in with the waffles, baby. Let's go. So mm. you guys can see very easily there is a nice distinction between the two. These controllers do look different. One thing to mention here as well is that Let's if you go. have a controller a follower, that looks in. just All like right. this one, make sure that it has the little dot right here indicating that this one is a quad rated controller. If it does not have the dot, it is more or less trio and under supported. Just to give you a basic ballpark idea on how a lot of this works. The number one thing to do is to not open everything up and just throw it all together like that. Keep your controller with your product, always. If you're gonna have these fans installed into your system, put a little piece of tape on it, get a little sticky note, even write a Q on here, write a T on this one, whatever makes sense, W4, W7, whatever you're gonna need to know once you connect everything up, because this is gonna come later after you have the fans and everything installed on radiators, in the case, water blocks and all that stuff there's a lot involved there and this is always an afterthought because you've been spending all this time building the system okay so i hope this helps out now these controllers can look a little different as you can see here from the top side this one's more of a rounded edge where this one's got it like a like a border around it like that they are both still five port controllers they both still offer the dip switch power connection on this side and then on the flip side you get the micro USB and the daisy chain link cable. Now this is gonna be for single controller use, plugging this in to your system. And then this right here is gonna be how you would connect one controller to the next. Let's give you a little idea on that. Gonna interject here quick, but a couple of things in the chat. Uh, first of all, Spot of Light, thank you very much for that hashtag hydrate. Light it up indeed, buddy. RGB is life, RGB is love. My eyes, uh, my eyes, my eyes. <laughs> Second of all, uh, Ayuki Ona, I hope I said that right. Welcome to Thermal Tech Live, where we know it just works and we talk about all things tech and waffles because we are hungry. Absolutely. Finally, uh, B Park's coming in with a great question Can those controllers be purchased? Could not find them on Amazon. So we first and foremost don't sell the controllers separately, but if you do have warranty with it, because we usually offer well, like a three-year warranty with our fans, as well as some of our other products, some are two, you'll have to double check. But if you got warranty on it, give us a call. We'll be talking about that later on during the stream as well to help you out as far as if you need to contact us for either support, warranty replacement, or whatever. We'll be going over that later too, so that way we can kind of give you guys an idea on that. Thanks for the question though. And stay tuned later on that because we're going to have more information on that. Tevin's Tech, I appreciate it. And I saw making sure that you got your entries in correct. I didn't forget, my friend. All right. Yeah. And actually, uh, before I forget, uh, mm. I actually want to interject here. Sorry, Mike. Uh, Tevin's Tech did actually bring up a, a good question a while back. Yeah. Uh, does TT still sell the Duo Orb? And the answer is no. That mm. has not been around for quite some time. Uh, that was a very, very older model. What I think one of our. Or like very first ones besides from the golden orb of course let's yeah, go I mean, these, a new follow these guys are coming way back man. all right game ds official thanks so much for following welcome welcome welcome, welcome. welcome. And finally uh freaking guy comes in with hey steve it's, uh it's come time to change out my fans i have i have a six case and three aio fans what's my best kit oh man that's a loaded question there's so many different options to choose from there's so many different like there's so many different ways you can go um I don't know if we'll have enough time to cover all of that on stream, but you know, we're on Discord. You know, shoot us a message. We're more than happy to help. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, a lot of times when, uh, I mean, if you're looking for a new AIO, like all together, and uh, you definitely like our RGB that we have to offer here from Thermal Take, um, I'd probably for the most part, highly suggest looking at our Flow Series AIOs, 
We have those with a variety of fans that are TT RGB plus already. And then more or less, you can just buy the same fans to have everything match and basically have everything be the same, kind of like what we've done here. This AIO does not include uh, our Ring Trio fans. This is one of our Ultra, our Tough Liquid fans. So this is going to have the screen on it and it comes with our Tough fans. But hey, I wanted a little bit more RGB in my life. So I just bought some uh, Ring Trio fans to not just add in for my case, but also for my AIO or DIY LCS just to get it all to match. I think the big thing is just kind of understanding what fan is on the AIO. And like Steve was saying, that's why stuff like our Discord as well as our live chat on our website is there to help. Ask us a question anytime, and we'll be going over how you do that later so that way it helps for people that are just looking to ask a question where to go for US directly and, uh, you know, help clean up a lot of that uh, communication stuff there too. I know a lot of people ask, where do we go? What do I got to do? How do I get a new controller? You know, those things are already coming up already, and we're barely even in the stream all that much, right? Ooh, Not wrong. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Is RGB are the best in the business, number one. Thank you so much, B Parks. I appreciate it that support man it rgb is tough in the market it's tough out there you get a lot of critics man it works great for people they don't say nothing people that have lots of problems of course they're gonna let everybody know and that's why we're here as manufacturers to help out okay so let's get back into it we got a lot to cover today we got a lot to cover today okay so and we got the waffle time going. Steve, give us a quick reminder uh, later on when we get a little bit closer, just to, you know, get that fun little reminder. You've got plenty of time. We're at 21 minutes. Nice. And that freaking guy says that I have the Glacier 370 pre-built with TT fans, but I want better efficiency fans. I'll DM you, Steve. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you ever have some questions on that, I mean, especially with like our pre-built systems, you can definitely upgrade those. Um, just keep that in mind or keep the old fans because you will have to go back to the original factory configuration if you do have to send it back for warranty. So always want to make sure that's a, you know, front and center thing. Okay. And All right. One thing. Sorry, Mike. One no, thing. no, go ahead. I'm so sorry. No. Uh, freaking guy. Thank you so much for your support for LCGS, man. Appreciate that. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. Appreciate you. Definitely, definitely. Thank you, Steve. Gosh, what a jerk I was. <laughs> Okay. Nah, okay. Man. No, Let's it's go. just, it's, it's, it's so much to think about. It's so much to talk about. Okay. So controller wise, how do you set it up? How does this actually work? Right? So if I have two controllers, if I, or more, let's just start with two. Okay. If I have one controller, it's not really that big a deal. I one don't need to use a link cable because this guy doesn't exist. But if I'm going to be running go. two controllers, diving in. Oh, hey, yeah. Dallas P. Nice. Welcome. Welcome. If I have two controllers, I have two different options. One option is, is that I can use, this is the USB header cable. You can see that plugs to your motherboard. And then you got this side. It's going to have go. A new follower. these Dive two oh, micro yeah. USB cables right here. Hey, Panda Bear, thanks so much for joining in. Welcome. So we got these. Now you can go very easily Gosh, how, how do i say this how okay 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 i think i'm i'm it's it's i'm like going ahead but then i'm having to back backtrack a little bit if i got two controllers versus one i can plug this in to the controller like this right that one's done one controller down now if i only have two i can definitely use this other one to plug it in and I can connect them up one and one, one and two, however you want to call it. Now, the thing that's going to be important about this is determining which one is going to be one and which one is going to be two. Ideally, if I'm going to be running something like fans versus LED strips, water blocks, or other accessory cooling items, I always want to make fans, for the most part, my number one controller. This is usually going to be a controller by default it's going to have all four of the dip switches down or closest to the numbers. Basically on the bottom side of this next to the numbers, not where it says on. I know it's kind of hard to see there. And same with this one right here. If this is going to be, and I'm going to say this is now, this is controller two, where I want this one to be number one. I will look into my manual and it's going to tell me that I'm going to need to move up the number one dip switch 
to the on side. So now I'm oh, it's gonna be tough. You can kind of see it right there where that one's now up and these other three are down. This is gonna now have the controllers be one and two. This is very important or you're gonna have software problems down the road and you're gonna have repeating controllers which you're gonna be stressed about because you're gonna think something's bad or broken and it's just could be something as simple as the dip switch. So once I've established this is one and this is two, now I can look back to my options again. At Thermal Take, we like to give you guys options. It can one be confusing, but once you wrap your head around it, I think you'll see a little bit more of the convenience features that we have to offer. Now, if I don't wanna run these, like say I got one in the front and I got one in the back on my cooling system, or if I'm gonna have these two next to each other, I can either kind of, you know, strap these cables all nice and clean. We can do some nice cable management in the case. Or what I can do is disconnect this one. Say I have a third controller. Or say, for example, I have, and I'll use this case right here as an example, a Thermal Take Tough Liquid Ultra AIO. Because that Tough Liquid Ultra is going to require one of these, allowing you to more or less have a second one to go to controllers. Because now with the LED screens and how um, and how I got all of it, you know, how we have all of this stuff set up now, that's gonna take up one of the two ports. So the daisy chain is gonna become a lot more important now going forward with how our new AIO stuff works. And hence why we wanna do a fun little stream for this. All right, questions, anything that I'm missing? Getting those waffles in, way to go, way to go. All right. so. If I'm gonna have to sacrifice or lock down one for my AIO, as we come back down here to the controllers, now that I know that this one's gonna have to go to my AIO, it leaves me with just one choice. But you don't have to worry about that because you can now extend this up to 16 controllers. It's not gonna matter. You don't have to worry about that. But the one thing you do need to worry about and what I always recommend is that whatever controller is number one should be the one connected to the system going to the motherboard. Don't have the primary or main connection from the USB header motherboard going into a controller that's not number one. Start somewhere, number one's an easy place to start. And then from there, as you see, this going into the controller, this is going to be the out with the little four pin and this is our little daisy chain cable. This thing's gonna push in and it's gonna lock in. There is a clip right here. There is also very delicate wires. Do not pull on this to remove it. Always grab it by the controller and I usually just, or that controller, but the connector itself and just kind of wiggle it back and forth. It can be a little tight on your hands, but it's a lot better and safer than worrying about pulling these little fragile wires out because man, this can be a big headache for you if you're running three, four or more of these controllers and just wondering where something is not passing through. Now, if I'm gonna be running two controllers like that, this is of course gonna be always the input and this always the output when linking them together. I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna install this in here like so. And this is gonna be the correct configuration for running two controllers off of a single micro USB, where my other one is gonna be dedicated, for example, to one of our TT Ultra products that requires a direct connection because it has an LED screen for it. And of course, if you don't have that, you say you got two controllers, they're here on like the front side of the system, I can always use a second one and just route that bad boy to the back. And then that way, like I said, it gives you that cable management benefit so you can have some you can have a pile here, you have a pile there, but at least it's organized. And you got a good amount of cable length there with that too. Now, of course, power is always a big thing. Um, like we were talking about earlier with power, this requires a single Molex connection per controller in order for it to work. You do have to plug in this Molex. I do not recommend getting splitters or extensions for that, especially when dealing with quad fans. And that's just because the LED count and the power count. You definitely have more flexibility with duos and trios and other products that have a limited or definitely a lot less LEDs than some of our other extremely high-end products like the quad fan. The quad fan is actually an, an amazing product for what it is. 
and what it requires and what it offers you with that many LEDs and that type of a control with it. There is a lot involved with it. And I would say it would be one of the products that would more or less give you the most problems because it has the most features. So a lot of times you will see a lot of that going on with quad controllers or with quad fans. And the other one too is people get it mixed up. They won't put the quad fan on the quad controller and it just doesn't work. It's not gonna show up in the software and they just think they got the wrong software version or it's an OS thing or it's a this or it's a that. It's everything, but I forgot to use the right controller. So again, make sure you keep everything in their little groups, right? You get your water block stuff over there. You got your fans right over here. Hey, these are my controllers for my fans. Keep them together. Something as simple as writing a T on here, writing a Q on there. We are not gonna be mad at you if you need to send it in for RMA and it's got a little Q on there. But if you are concerned about that, a post-it note works great. Little piece of tape on, dude, I don't even know how many times. I can attest to this, by the way. Let's I've seen go. this when, when we do like right. CES stuff, bros, I'll be sitting here and I'll throw a little piece of tape on this guy. I'll throw a little piece of tape on that guy. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. I don't have to put one. I just got to put a T on there and I know. It just, it's like, huge to think about when you've gotten so far but yet you just got a little bit left to do right so labeling stuff and planning it out just like a loop is so important so i hope it, this helps uh, it's almost like uh, it just works right mike you know well we that's the goal right the goal is to you want it to just work so uh real quick i got a couple of things in the chat here man you guys are awesome in the chat today um so first and foremost important questions uh, Goodnow asks, are products with screens the only ones that require dedicated connection? At the moment, yes. Um, everything else will plug into a controller and allow you to split out to connect to other things um, from our RGB fittings to all of our fans, AIOs, water blocks, and everything else. So it is a th it's a screen thing or an ultra thing, I guess is a better way to kind of classify it. So all the ultra stuff is going to require one of these. Now, if you're going to be running, for example, multiple ultra products and fans, now we're going past the limit of two. And that's going to require either a hub to use another one of these and or split it up or being able to populate both USB 2.0 headers on the motherboard. It's really kind of up to you. And it's something that you'll have to think about because we have the screen for uh, the memory just as much as we have it for the AIO. We even got the MX2, which is a DIY LCS a CPU block and that's got a screen on it as well that requires it so it's just a you know a couple of things to think about as far as you know how the tech is going what the tech needs and then what limitations or what stuff you can run into because the last thing you need is like you're missing a splitter or a hub or something like that to just put it all together right so planning it out is definitely important and uh, the other question too was that I saw B Parks was asking show me where the Molex plugs into the controller again please let me do that really quick. Just gonna cover that. Yeah, yeah. And, and let me jump in. That. And then I saw the other ones. Dude, I'm loving it. I'm loving it, guys. We're gonna go for it. We're gonna go over it. Don't worry. So, hey. so we got our controllers that are right here. It's pretty obvious, as we've explained, that this is gonna be our input and our output for our daisy chain. It's on one side of the controller. Now we flip over to the other side of the controller. Of course, we got the dip switches, but that's really not a connection. And then of course we have our power connection here. Now this is a standard floppy power connector. So if your power supply has like one of those old floppy connectors on it, they do work um, for the most part. I mean, that's ideally what this is in a way when you look at this type of a connector, it's that same FDD power connection that you would normally see. And it's just more or less just on a longer cable with a Molex connection. Now, connecting this to the controller, you know, it, I've seen people go both ways. It's kind of funny. Um, with, with floppy, you know, there's like a little notch that's right here on the side. And then it's got the little flat top with the little, with the little uh, bump right here. You know, as far as you're looking at it this way versus uh, gold finger side down. So as I have the controller faced up like so, I'm gonna have my controller faced up as well. And the easiest way I've always explained it is be face up and face up with the two. I'm gonna take this, applying my thumb just right here on the back side of the connector itself, holding the controller, and then I'm gonna just take this and I'm gonna just push this right into the controller like so. So that way that's nice and snug. You don't wanna force it too much 
And yeah, when you go to pull it out or disconnect it as well, try to grab it from the controller, not from the wires, because the last thing you want is a short or a loose connection that's going to cause you some intermediate terribleness, right? And just remember, it's just a simple plugs in there. It bottoms out, so it, you kind of know it's in there good too. And, you know, it should hold it pretty well. One thing I can mention too on the cable management side of things, when you're going to route your cables and plug in your power supply and all that, Make sure this isn't pulling on this too tight. You're not bending or stretching the cables where you could cause some damage. Take it easy on this stuff, okay? Make sure everything works too before you do all your cable management. Get this all set up. Get all your stuff plugged in here. Operating system installed. Get it all done first. It's going to be so important for you. Cannot stress that enough. Test before you manage. Oh, totally, man. Totally. All right, and then, okay, so, and then I think next on the list, I got OG Gamers saying, isn't it wild that three days after I asked you about motherboards with connections on the back, Gigabyte and Main Gear announced a motherboard and PC case with connections on the back? I know, right? <laughs> that was a funny one, and um, I thought it was actually quite interesting. I mean, to, to, see, to see stuff like cable management improvements or to see somebody kind of come up with a different way to do things, I mean, that, that goes back to how we came out with the Ring Fan. I mean... Even, you know, Main Gear's used our ring fan for years and everything. And they look how much they've expanded and started doing more stuff on their own, you know, as they've grown and everything. And I, I got a lot of respect for them and a lot of what they do and everything like that, too. So, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just interesting, you know. We'll have to see how that goes. We'll have to see how the market adapts to that, right? Graphic card connections on the backside. What's that going to mean for case manufacturers and all the other stuff that has to change? So it's always the fun part of getting to see... You know, like what's going to happen in the market, like down the road, right? I mean, look at the next graphic cards, look at Gen 5 stuff and how Gen 5 stuff is already kind of changing the way a lot of people are thinking about doing some stuff with some other products having a big change possibly coming here in the very near future. And now a uh, quick shout outs to uh, first time uh, chatters. Uh, True Baca, I love that name, by the way. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for the follow. Uh so, Kev, welcome to Thermal Take Live. Uh, give them chills. What's going on, man? Good to see you. Good to see you. And, of course, I left uh, the two most important questions for last. First of all, uh, uh, good now is asking, is there a hub you recommend, USB internal hub, I'm assuming, uh, or any generic one is fine? Um, well, I mean, first and foremost, I got to give a shout out to Thermal Take. We have our H200 USB hub. Mm. Buy that one. <laughs> That's an easy wow, one. what a shameless plug. That's an easy one. That's an easy one. But you know, no, the H200 hub exists for those kind of reasons. We came out with that knowing that you're going to need more. And, um, you know, I'm going to give a nice little shout out to our, my, my friend, my, the wonderful company Asus, because Asus, as for a while, had a variety of motherboards that only had a single USB header on it compared to like every other motherboard company out there. I don't know why. I don't know why we still only get two. Why do we not have like eight of those? Like we have serial ATA ports. I, I honestly don't know what's going on with that. I mean, if a motherboard had like four or more of those USBs, I think it would be huge for a lot of people that have controllers, monitoring stuff. And I'm not saying just from us, but like everybody else too. There's a lot of people tying into that USB. A lot of people tying into that USB. Gemini Fang is coming in with that hashtag hydrate. Make the water slide down your throat to refresh your body because hashtag hydrate is important. Mm, Thank you. Mm. Oh. Let's Liquid go. cooling. A new follower. Finally. You're, no, you're not finally. Don't give me that finally stuff. We've barely been streaming. I know. We, we've, we haven't even scratched the surface. <laughs> Dude, we have. I mean, we're, we're still in the box. The most important question for last. Yes, of course. This has been burning on everyone's mind. No, it hasn't. <laughs> uh, you'd be surprised. No, no. Uh, what is it? What Dino is it? What is it? Be honest, coming in with uh, where do I download more RAM? <sighs> From the Blinker <laughs> Fluid Store. <laughs> Have you gone to BlinkerFluid.com? Oh. You should try it. <laughs> No, I got to move Oh, man, I needed that. I, I, that. That is clearly up to you if you'd like to go there. I'm not making or asking you to do that. <laughs> so controller-wise, all this fun, right? We have a variety of ways to connect some stuff up. This is, you know, these are the first simple steps. 
being able to connect that USB hub directly to the controller, making sure that connection is in there all the way. I mean, USB hubs, it's not a type C. It goes only one way. You need to make sure you put it in the right way the first time, or you've more or less basically just broke your controller. This connection in here is not made out of antimantium. This connection in here is very brittle. It's usually just soldered, maybe got a little dab of glue on it. We're gonna take one apart later and show you because they'll be part of our troubleshooting guide. It's actually pretty easy to take these apart too, but helping you out with that with our troubleshooting guide later on that. So plugging the power in, you're gonna need the power for both the controllers. Again, if you're gonna be using higher end RGB, like our ring quads, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you separate these on those Molex rails. Don't run everything all in one. Try to split it up a little bit. Um, and that's more or less uh, when you're dealing with like a variety, like quad fans all around, for example, a lot of LEDs, a lot of power, space your power out appropriately so that it's safe and everything like that. You know what I mean? And make sure you get a power supply that's got enough connections for you too. Now, another thing to understand as well is that there is not just one of these. Every single RGB pack that you get from us, excluding the single fan packs, all right? Excluding the single fan packs, as we, we do it for a cost of savings, but all the RGB stuff, it's a water block, it's a fan, RGB fitting, they're all gonna come with a USB header cable, they're all gonna come with a power cable, and they're all gonna come with a daisy chain and a controller. So each one, you buy three three packs, you're gonna have three controllers. Do you need to use all three controllers? Absolutely not. If you have three fans and you get say three, three and three, you have nine fans there. So with that, you can use two controllers because you have 10 ports total, five and five, and you more or less got one free port for plugging something else in. Who knows what it could be? It could be another RGB accessory. It could be an LED strip but you don't have to use all three of the controllers. You can combine them up, and even as a nice benefit with that, you might have one extra controller, save it. You might need it as a backup plan down the road or a troubleshooting thing on your initial setup, and you can always swap the fan out. Just make sure you know what it is. Make sure you know what it is is so important. Quick Waffle shout out to uh, Beantown for joining us in the chat. How is it going, my friend? It is going very good. Thank you, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. Is it? It is waffle time. Exclamation is, mark. Waffle now. Hurry up because uh, we Enter are almost out of waffles. We got 60 people watching, baby. Let's go. 40 more people to unlock a second win. If you guys know anybody out there that likes RGB, maybe they don't like RGB, but they like waffles. Share the link. Tell them to join in. All you got to do is follow to enter. How much time they got left, though? Well, it's actually funny you mentioned that because much time? waffle time has just ended. Oh, <laughs> we were like literally right on seconds away. And I'm like, uh, ah! <laughs> yeah, no worries. No worries. All right. So waffle time has ended. Thank you guys for entering again this week. We will be announcing a winner here soon. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. We'll be doing it in just a minute. I want to get past this part and then we'll go into that, you know, fun part of letting you guys win something. I'm super excited. Hey! But yeah, yeah, no problem. No problem. Sorry if you just missed us. I thought it was close. Oh, I mean, he was what, like a minute away? Poor guy. Like seconds away, man. Seconds oh. away. Oh, it's brutal. Okay. All right. Not everybody can get it, but yep. Next week. Every week, baby. You I know. A, I know. I got a blurry knows. here. I think I NSFW'd myself. Oh, so no. Oh, no. Uh, no, me, no. Let me back out and uh, back in. One sec. You're going to have to update the BIOS on that camera, I think, too, buddy. Man, you know, you, you know, you guys got to tell Steve that he needs to care about his stream setup a little more. But, but, but I'm just a bot. <sighs> I'm a lonely bot. Need a BIOS update? The, the first part is denial. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, please, no. <laughs> oh, my oh, my gosh. Then comes the excuses. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh no, I deleted him. Uh oh. Recovery, recovery file. Hold on. All right, rebooting. Hold on, hold on, I gotta reboot. Reboot Steve. 
Okay, shit, TT shaders. Oh man, I hope they initialize. All right. Okay. Let's see. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, it's getting hot in here. It's getting hot in here. I'm stressing out. Help me. It's dark in here. Bypassing matrix. Executing new bat file. Hold on. I need to initiate a new config. There's a table. And on this table, there's a red pill and a blue pill. Do not take drugs. Drugs are bad. Drugs okay. are bad. <laughs> Hold on. I need to log everything so I can explain why you failed later. So we can make fun of you in the next meeting. Sad bot noises. It'll be a video conference, by the way, because he's a bot. Ah, ah, fair. All right. And wait for it. Oh. Whoa! Oh. Man, Hacker Man's at his finest. Woo! Back, baby! It was dark. Oh my and gosh. All I heard was this it just works over and over on an endless loop. Oh god. I think we fixed the 360p error slash virus that he had. Oh no. Wait, don't don't move. Don't don't make any sudden movements. No sudden movements. Give that man so you need some it's he might have had too much spice. Little too much little too much. I can't even keep my how dare you say that? I can't even keep a face, a straight face, man. How dare ah. You? ah, crisis averted, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> he is back. Give that man a waffle. Oh man. I, I could totally go for a waffle, actually. I know, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Controllers are going to give you a variety of things. You're going to have these in all of the products, like I was saying, as far as getting all that stuff set up. You're going to have different cables, too, for different products. Let me let me show you this as well. We kind of dive in here on this. Now, these are going to be cables for other things that we got as well. Now, this is going to have the same type of connection that my fans are going to have. So, for example, like with my ring quad fan that I have here, it's gonna have that same nine pin USB connection. Folks, this is not go directly to your motherboard, okay? This only goes to our controllers, nothing else. It doesn't work with anybody else, but our controllers, okay? And this is the way you wanna go. This is the way you gonna go. I will talk about the TT Sync controller later. It is not something you're gonna to wanna to do, all right? You're gonna lose a lot of features and you're gonna be paying for features you can't use by going that route. So we'll explain that a little bit more in detail. So as you can see, you're going to get a variety of different cable connections. This being a fan, as you can see, this looks similar like a fan, but the wires might be a little different. And even something like this, where the cable and wiring is a little bit different for something that doesn't require as much stuff. Maybe it's just some LEDs like a water block. And then of course, with these, they're going to have different connection ends on them for something like an LED strip. We do have those syncs up. They're called Lumi strips. We also have other devices like our LED strips that go to like our distros that have these small little connections like that. I like the fact that they're modular because I, you know, I can install all my cooling without having to worry about the cabling later or even something like this. Now, this one, it just works. This one's going to go with something like, say like this, our DIY LCS block. This is our W7. This is one of the W7s I've used in a variety of different builds. And as you can see, it's got a cable that comes off of it and we do give it a modular option. So it's a lot easier to not worry about the cable while doing your installation. And then of course, with this, it's gonna have a five pin or a four pin. They're gonna be a variety of different connections depending on the product you have. So again, always making sure you keep everything together. And then as you can see, this is just gonna connect up like so. And that's how my W7 is gonna then connect into my system. Now, the W7 is very unique, not just for the fact that it's a DIY LCS block on some of our higher end cooling systems, but the W7 as well also offers what we have as a built in temperature sensor in here as well. Now, this is not the CPU temperature, but this is actually getting the temperature of the coolant that's inside the block. The little sensor guy is it's on the 
It's right here on the inside. You can kind of see it. We've taken these apart in the past for some maintenance and stuff, but it goes right there on the side. Now, this is going to give you the coolant temperature and what you're going to need and what you're going to get in the box with the W7 is you will have a controller that says the word temp right here, T-E-M-P. Now, that means that this controller will support products that have temperature features like our TF2, inline uh, flow sensor, our W7, our MX2, variety of other temp featured products require a temp controller. Now, if you have multiple temp products, you're gonna get multiple temp controllers, but you can definitely use all the temps on all one temp controller, no problem. You don't have to use the W7 with the W7's controller, only if you have like a TF2 or another product that require or has a temperature feature, you can just plug them all in to the temp controller versus the others. Even the quad controller that comes with a quad fan does not support the temp controller. But again, it's all included with each item. You'll get a controller. So that's why it's so important. And I want to spend this much time to explain how everything kind of goes together. You got to keep it, got to know what it is. Label these bad boys. It will save you so much time later. And then the other thing too is that these little cables can easily disconnect. A lot of these are pretty unique. So you don't really have to worry about marking or labeling these guys as much. And as far as this connection goes, that goes into the controller, it really doesn't matter which one. It's really all up to you. It's not gonna matter if it's one or it's five, but I usually always recommend to start with one and populate one, two, three, four, five for most cases. You don't have to, but it's usually, it makes more sense in the software side of things, especially with addressable patterns when you want them to copy especially with fans. It's always nice to copy off the fan. It has more LEDs and it's a little bit more straightforward. That's how the system works. And that's my experience with it to give you that little bit of extra you won't find in a manual. All right, so controllers, blocks, cables, power, links, daisy chaining, all of that stuff. Oh my. Is a lot and it's all options for you. It gives you the options to do so much more than what you can find in most anybody else's RGB system. We have a very deep, vast RGB system. It's quite, it's quite, as, as somebody that, that needs to know, it's it's been a lot of homework, I'll tell you. Been a lot of homework on this. Okay. Any particular questions on that before we go forward with our waffle for the day, with our little ecosystem? What you get, how the controllers are, how the cables plug. We showed how to connect everything up, how all the cables plug in. We brought in, in different scenarios. The only thing I guess that just kind of last to mention here is um, a very unique scenario, but we do have 200 mil fans that are also TTRGB plus. This one right here is one of my favorites because it's a, a ring trio 200 mil fan. This thing has the most LEDs on a fan. It's insane. You get two rings, one in the front, one in the back, plus the hub that spins. What's unique about this particular product is that this one requires two ports off of the controller. Now, this thing is not necessarily sold in a lot of combo packs. We don't usually include this with any cases, at least not anymore. We've moved to ARGB stuff for cost-effective and synchronization, but for this thing, it's pretty awesome. It's got a lot of features. It's our toughest, highest end 200 mil fan until we make a tough fan one, which we haven't made. But yeah, look at this bad boy. So it requires a lot right there. You got to consider that's going to need the two. Now this is going to sell, sorry, this is going to sell with, um, with a controller and it can also sell without a controller. We have two different models, for example, on Amazon. Gosh, it's so much to remember. And the reason for it is the price. You want two of these, but you don't want to buy two controllers because you don't need that. Buy the one with the controller and then get the one without the controller for the savings and you can link them both up to the same one, no problem. So I hope that helps you when you're doing your shopping, especially if you're looking at this guy because this is one of the unique ones that we sell single packs for. Same with some of these quads, trios. We sell single packs and we put right on there, no controller included. So you can't just buy five of the singles and expect it to work. 
I've seen that. And I feel bad when somebody goes that route because it was tough to buy stuff. Even back then, RGB was hard to get, let alone your graphics card. So it's been, it's been a crazy couple of years, right? So right. consider that. With the single packs, that's the way it rolls too, okay? So we do sell the single packs without controllers, anticipating that you bought a three pack. And you know, I'm gonna tell you this, this little side thing. This was my idea, because I, I was like, I told them, I'm like, I'm like, hey, Kenny, we sell them in a three pack. I think that's awesome. You know, most people put three fans in the front, three fans on their AIO, they're doing 360, whatever and everything. But just like basketball, where's the and one? How do I get that back fan? How do I miss that one fan? I got to buy another three pack to get one more. And I think that's where it's like, oh, you know, we should support that. And I said, awesome. So then we went forward with offering single pack fan solutions. So that way you could buy a three pack of these and then just get one more for your and one. And then you wouldn't feel bad spending another hundred and something dollars to get a three pack for two fans that you're not going to use. Or maybe those two fans went on the top right there too, right? It just gave you more options. And I think doing that without the controller made it a lot better. So be careful how you buy, plan how you're gonna buy. Know that most of our stuff is a three pack and we do offer single pack options. So don't overbuy either. Know that we care. <laughs> I think it's probably where I wanna go with that. You know, so you guys know, people might not know that we, oh, I just needed one more. I didn't need to buy another three pack, you know? And you can have two, and, and, and you know, just like what Box is saying, but you can buy a three pack and have two extras for backups, which is always nice to have. Or maybe if you're, you know, kind of going, you do three, three, and then one, seven fans. It's still that wonderful plus one kind of scenario. So I'm really glad that we've been doing the single pack stuff too. So that's good. Sorry about that, Steve. So sorry. So, so sorry. No, no worries. No worries. Just a question that I know Lobster's been having for a minute. Yeah. Uh, the case that you are currently using is the Divider 500 TG Ultra, correct? This is actually the divider. I think it's a 550 Ultra. There it is. Um, so, but uh, yeah, this was one of the divider cases that we built uh, a while back. How Actually. does it compare in size to the View 71? Oh, I mean, well, how do I do this? Ah, what a conundrum. No, 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 no. Thermal Take Life. I got TT, dude. He already gave me a great idea. We got this fun little thing right here called tape measure. So, Divider 550 Ultra from the feet. You're looking at 21 inches in height. Take notes, everyone. This will be on the quiz. This will be on the test at the end for the waffles. And about 18 deep. And since you mentioned my favorite case, the View 71. You're about 23. Almost 23 on the height. And we're almost about 23 as well on the depth to give you that little bit of a comparison. So it's definitely smaller and uh, more of a, I mean, it. I don't know. Do we consider, did we consider it a full tower or was it just another mid tower? I, I'm actually kind of, I, I can't remember because I think in order for it to be a full tower, it has to support a 360 on top. But um, it could be the way it's listed and everything like that. Mid tower for sure. But yeah, it's definitely a little bit small, a couple inches, and it makes a difference on the height, especially with that. But the View 71 supports definitely a lot more um, when you're looking at cooling options as well for both radiator fitment as well as uh, fan quantity. So um, there's a good amount of space in that bad boy. I love then, me the View 71. And then what a view. Seven sec, I did not forget about you. Uh, important question: Does that 20, uh, the 200 millimeter fan, not support ARGB effects? It's only only one color per ring. Well, okay. So for ARGB, I honestly have never hooked this up to a TT Sync controller to see how that would work. I wouldn't recommend it anyways because that would be the only way to kind of because we didn't make a trio because a trio is a, this is a plus product, right? This is the plus family. So we do have ARGB 200 millimeter fans, but they're called Pure Series. So like a pure ARGB 20 for 200 mil, we do make those for ARGB options. On the flip side, I do actually have some ARGB stuff to talk about later once we get through the monster we have called TTRGB Plus. But this being a plus fan with the amount of LEDs and all of what it's got on there, um, yeah, this is gonna be more for our controller. And you know, it's 
as, as you compare ARGB to TTRGB Plus, for example, there is such a big difference, not only in just the features, but understand that the motherboard has an LED maximum count. Some of these motherboards, it's like 120, 140 LEDs only. How many LEDs are on the quad fan, Steve? Just one? 54. So what are you going to do when three fans are maxed out on one port and you're lucky to have two on a motherboard? So that's why this is plus, And that's why we have ARGB on the flip side because those are less LED counts. Still gives you a nice animation, but it's all synced then with the motherboard and it's all on the motherboard. At that point, we're just an LED strip connecting into that connector. And from there on out, it's all up to the motherboard to make the connection and get everything going. But it just and makes it a simple that, like LED connection. Yeah. You'd think 54 is crazy, dude. That Ring Trio 20, guys, 60 LEDs. Have you ever seen that many LEDs on a case fan before? So many, right? You so many, so many audio acting up a little bit. I saw that. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Case comparison. Oh, and lobster, that was a hydrate, too. Oh my gosh, we missed the hydrate, dude. I'm Sadness. so sorry. Cheers. I got you. It's a lot of RGB, it's definitely a lot of RGB. Okay, so controller wise and all that kind of stuff setting up, that's how everything plugs in, that's how the cables and all that stuff works. It just works, right, Steve? It just works. It so just works. We've covered what you get. We've talked about what the difference is. And we've more or less talked about how you install it. Now we need to jump to basically the configuring side of things going into the second half of the stream for today. So I you know, you know, B Park, you know, man, I'm feeling a little hungry too. I think we need a little bit of a break for all of our amazing. Look at it, 64 amazing, beautiful people watching us. Thank you so much for everything. Good luck on the waffle, Steve. I will uh, I will leave it to you to spread the cheer and the joy. One sec, before you do so, I just Absolutely. gotta say one final thing. Absolutely. You know, we've been talking a lot about RGB today because we're just that passionate about it. Like there's so much stuff here and i i mean for honestly for that's a right, first ghost. time builder just getting into you know ttrg plus totally understand it could be un, uh you know overwhelming at uh, personal experience myself straightforward but you know not everyone has the amount of experience that you know mike or i do um but that's why we're here you know that's why we do these streams that's why we talk about it we go step by step showing you guys how this connects what to do what to use because you know just we're just passionate about RGB, man. We hope you guys are too. They they want RGB waffles, Steve. Well, about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I could add RGB to the waffles. I'm just not sure it'd be uh, edible, if you know what I mean. <laughs> not sure. Mm. Yeah, and you know, I you know, and ready. I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here thinking that back in the day when we did the coolant video and we did the syrup testing, how dare me use mini pancakes? We're going to have to, are we going to have to do a different syrup this next time? We're going to be doing a cool, we're going to, cool ones, we're, we're due pretty soon for some coolant testing. You know, we better actually have some, uh, some waffles next time. We should probably think, uh, yeah, you know, maybe some mini waffles or something. Maybe make some special ones. Maybe we'll put waffle batter. And just see if that works. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> get a little, that. it might get a little chunky. Might get a little <laughs> chunky. Oh, man, some good stuff. All right. All right. You want to go ahead and uh, pick the person? Let me go back to... Um, yeah. We go back on over here. We go back on over here. All right, guys. So before we get started again, just want to remind everyone, you know, waffle time. We do it every every Wednesday, 1 o'clock. Uh, it is open to U.S. and Canada residents only. We will be opening it up to Global at some point. We're working on that, guys. Just hang tight. Thank you very much for your support and your patience. Um Again, quick run through for people who are, you know, joining us for the first time. Exclamation mark waffle in the chat while the giveaway is live. We'll give you a chance to be selected as the chosen one. Pick me, the pick chosen me. one is going to get a chance to spin the wheel of mystery prizes. Mike, 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 Mike,
you could win no. swag packs or you could win that elusive mystery prize we've only had one person win that elusive mystery prize they are actually in this chat somewhere giggity uh, yeah it's up to them if they want to talk about it or not i will leave it up to them but uh without further ado it is time for us to select our chosen one for the day aha Give b parks b roll. parks is asking did we ever get to see what the grand prize was that the other user wins I, it, it did it was delivered right was it delivered do we know that, that is uh that is uh lurky it's on the way made. It is, yeah. And that's and Lurky will he'll let you know. Yeah, he'll let you know. He maybe he'll you know throw something. Chat. Maybe he'll throw something in Discord for us one day. You never know. Exactly, exactly. You know, either throw something in chat, throw something in Discord. Who? Oh, so many options. Up to him. <laughs> I can't force him to do anything. Okay. I hope he yeah. likes it though, because there was something in there that I did specially just for him. That is true. There's a couple of things, like for sure, two things that are in that package that. Most on likely the truck. another Ooh, person for delivery. <gasps> it's out for delivery today or on the truck. Oh, okay. All right. Soon. Soon. <laughs> Soon. Giggity, giggity, Let's giggity. Let's go. A new giggity. follower diving in. All right. All righty. Without, uh, without much further ado, let's get right into it. Who is going to be our chosen one for the day? <laughs> hey, XG. Thanks so much for the follow. Appreciate you. Who will win today? I wonder. Let's good go. luck, good luck, good luck. A new follower diving in. Oh, no, we got another follower. Another follower. You guys can join in next week. You guys can join in next Let's week. Let's go. We a already we already did the thing. It's already oh, closed out, guys. You guys will be signed up for next week, okay? All right. So, just FYI, uh, <laughs> it did a little thing on me, so I had to refresh. I hope it's not going to pick two people. Let's oh, my go. A new follower diving in. The first in. Person. Oh, Calling right. It right now. Here we go. Here we go. Waffly waffles. Waffly waffles. There it is. There it is. Congratulations. Congratulations. There is Congratulations. our chosen Han Hani. You are the winner today. Do we have Han Hani in the chat? Can we get a woot woot? A woot woot? A yeet? Wait, me? Yay! Yay! All right! We got a live one, baby! There it is. Sweet. Congratulations, Han Hani. You have been selected. GG. As a chosen GGs, GGs, WPs. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Are we, uh, are we getting excited here? I'm, I'm stoked. Oh. I'm stoked. Let's spin that wheel. Are, 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 we gonna, are you ready, we, Mike, uh, to take me to my land of waffles? Hold on, hold on. We gotta, we gotta get a vibe here. What do we want? We want, kind of. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This is one of my favorites. You ready? Absolutely. Are you ready? Absolutely. Waffle time! Engage! Ooh. Yes! Yes! I'm here. I'm here. Look at me and my fluffy land of waffles. I love it. I would oh, want to me, be oh, nowhere oh. else but here. Let me optimize you. That BIOS update. Oh, yeah, the BIOS update. BIOS update. Yeah. Yeah. 75, by the way, wafflers. We got 75 wafflers right now in the chat. If we hit 100, we will do this again. Let me be clear. Good luck. That, yeah, that is my message to you Giggity. guys. If you guys did not win today, do not fret. We do this every Wednesday. There are always chances to win. And of course, as Mike mentioned, if we get a hundred of you guys in the chat, we'll spin it again. All right, tell your friends, tell your family. Hide your kids, hide your wife. No, no, please don't do that. So with that said, it is now time. Our weekly waffle giveaway. Hen Honey, uh, I don't know if you've been here, if you've seen it before, if you know how this works, but I will spin the wheel when you give me the command. So whenever you are ready to find out what you're going to take home today, tell me to spin that wheel in the chat and your wish will be my command. Spin that wheel, baby! And there it is. Still, still, still spin, nice. spin, spin. Good luck. Where it's going to land, I have no clue. But we're going to find out oh, today. Oh, 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 oh. That is RGB fans. RGB fans. Hey, we got the RGB in here. Congratulations, Han Hani. You have now been chosen to win. Glorious TTRGB fans. Shoot me a whisper on Twitch. Or if you're on our Discord server, send me a message. You have a choice of any of our TTRGB Plus fans. Or if you prefer, 
an ARGB product line. Up to you. We can definitely chat about what you want to win in chat. So, Whisper, Discord, whatever works for you. Send me a message. And again, guys, didn't win today. We'll be back next week. And the week after that. 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 Waffle times for everyone, every week. Everybody, every week. Congratulations. That is awesome. So, woo, so awesome. Another waffler, another giveaway. Now, I think the thing that's, I think it's kind of funny that, you know, we, they, they, they won some fans in, in light of us talking about RGB fans. But I think the thing that we don't really talk, we don't want to talk about this too much on the channel is like, they get a choice. Like they get to pick like what kind of fans they want. Well, what can they, what they can they, what can they pick, Steve? What do they get well, to choose from? Like, like, let, let some people know how spicy this really gets. Well, I'm very, very, very glad you mentioned that because, of course, like uh, Ratchet Tone says, uh, only fans for our TTRGB fans. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. And of course, you have them uh, right in front of you. Uh, if you want to dive into that glorious ring quad fan, because I know I do, Ooh. that is up for grabs. You can choose your color. You can choose it in black. You can choose it in snow. Right? Oh, that's right. We have them in both Snow Edition as well as Black, so they can pick. 120, 140, they can pick. They want trios. They want quads. They can pick. Dude, this is like the best giveaway ever. We don't just, like, give you a t-shirt. We like you get to pick the size. It's like the best convention ever. Well, <laughs> technically, if, if they get a swag pack, I give them a t-shirt, but they get the best t-shirt. This is true. This is true. How and you know, it's not wear it today, by the way. And uh, um, we have given out 3080s before. We've done PC full system giveaways too. And uh, we might be due for one here soon. So uh, stay tuned, guys. Make sure you like, get that little follow on there. You never know what we're going to do. Hold Always on, stay on, tuned. Hey, hold new on. month. It's June 1st, right? New month, hold baby. On, hold on. Uh, let me check my phone. This is the last time we did this. Uh, da, 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 da. Need some here. RAM limit? You know what? Yeah. I saw that right. follow, baby. You're good to go. You 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 are right. We are actually due. We're we're pretty I think we're we're due for a few things and everything like that. We've been going around. So you guys got to you guys that are in here that joined in here. I know you guys a lot of you might have been in here just for the giveaway. No worries. Awesome. Appreciate you guys hanging out with us. And of course, another winner this week, and we'll have another one next week, just like what Steve said. So, awesome times. Happy to give back. Love to give back, dude. Nice. I got some fans, baby. Got some fans. Stay tuned. Oh, yeah. Stay tuned. Only All right. fans. Okay. Whew. So, that's a, that's a good bit about RGB. That's what I would say. You know, there's a lot involved there with how the controllers, how everything kind of sets up. And how you gotta, you know, you configure stuff, right? Now, what what do you do? Like, what, what would what would I suggest as far as like, you know, going through the process? Now, if you haven't watched us on the streams before, as far as like what we've done in the past, most of the time, and I I preach this a lot for a lot of my cable management and everything, I'm just gonna kind of let it hang out and let it do its thing. I'm gonna make sure that I label my controllers. I'm gonna make sure I start plugging everything in. I'm gonna boot my system up. I'm going to get all my, you know, my operating system installed and get everything set up. And then I'm going to be tasked with jumping into my TTRGB software and how that works. And of course, what am I going to need in order for that to work? What challenges are, you know, what, what, what hiccups can I run into thermal mic? What, what could happen? You know, so we're going to be talking about that here a little bit further going forward after we do it. Cause I, I'm pretty sure everybody can understand how to install a fan so we can get past that part pretty easily. Now you're gonna install some fans for both intake as well as exhaust for most best practices. And if you have an AIO or a DIY LCS setup, you can have a variety of different components to sync everything up. Now this all works together in this ginormous ecosystem we call our TTRGB Plus ecosystem. It is vast. There is a lot of things and there's a lot of modes. I mean, of course we offer just about any color you can think of, but the thing and the biggest feature is we have over 20 different animated addressable LED modes. And those modes can be synced to individual rings, for example, with our hey, ring fan series, or just have everything go across the board and just have it all sync and be the same. We'll be talking about that as we go forward there with the software, 
But first, talking a little bit more about the connections and everything, you're gonna have a variety of cables back here. Make sure my, make sure my wires are good, I'm not pulling on something too much. You're gonna have a variety of cables back here. Some of this stuff could be spilling out a little bit like some syrup on your waffles. And you're gonna wanna make sure you're gonna have a case that's gonna accommodate all of this RGB awesomeness that you're gonna wanna put in there. So don't give the back part of the case a break. Always make sure that your foundation, your case, is gonna work for you for what you wanna do. Not just with your cooling application, but making sure you're gonna have some room there uh, for doing stuff. Like our Divider 550, for example, it's got a nice full length power supply cover, perfect for me to be able to jam and hide all of those controllers, cables, zip ties, and everything all up underneath there, allowing me to get a nice clean look on the back, close it all up, and definitely have a nice presentation here in the front without having to worry about cables and controllers flying all over the place. So it's always important to make sure you got the room, let alone the power and or the connections that you would have setting everything up. Setting everything up. It's pretty insane how a lot of it goes. What's next? Tell us. We can change the insects off of swappable fan blades. You know, and of course, uh, from if you guys didn't know, back when we did our TT Expo, like Box was just mentioning, we also have some other fans coming in too that are going to have reversible fan blades on them, allowing the intake to become an exhaust by changing out just the blade. This is going to be really neat, especially on certain products where you don't get the same on the front as you do on the back giving a reversible option. And that's one of the new upcoming products that we have coming for Thermaltake here. And I believe that should be around mid to late summer for what we have. And we'll have some more information, of course, for our summer TT Expo. So stay tuned for information on that coming soon. I don't have any anything to talk about just yet, but we're gonna have some stuff coming. So as Not long yet. as you guys know. Not yet. Not yet. Hold. 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 But there is an expo coming. I can smell it. So stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for that. Now, as I go and I get everything set up, I'm going to be plugging everything into the controllers, making sure I got my power connection seated, making sure that I got my USB connection seated properly. You know, a lot of that stuff's going to go pretty good. Keep in mind, too, with this being Molex and having these four little pins, one of these guys can back out when connecting it. It might not be something you see right away, but it's something that if you're watching this, go double check. Make sure that not one of these popped out or is loose. Make sure all of these are all basically engaged into the connector as well as on the other side coming from your power supply. One of the last things you want is a power short or any type of weird in fluctuations with the power that can make this controller give you a nightmare. So connecting, connecting everything up carefully, easily, relax. It's RGB, it'll be okay. This is a little connector. Go easy on it, okay? Don't be jamming this thing in here. If you gotta go in and out troubleshooting it, you're gonna do that 15, 20 times. Take it easy, all right? There's just some little connections that are on this guy and anything loose can give you some problems. As we'll talk about in the troubleshooting, flexibility of stuff like this on the wire, just by holding it could reconnect or deconnect your RGB signal, which could mean that you have a loose solder point. And we'll be showing you how to look at that later on in the troubleshooting tips as well. So that's that's a lot of fun stuff that's involved there. But of course, you're gonna be jumping in uh, to your system just like we are here right now. And this is gonna be inside of our divider 550. Now with our divider 550, we have a TTRGB plus ecosystem already established. And for the most part, when you go to boot up your software, you're gonna be greeted hopefully with this window showing, well, I guess more or less, if I reset the controllers here, you're gonna be greeted with a blank scenario showing controllers one and two right here on the screen. Now, this is because you set the dip switches on the controller correctly. This is because you've applied the power and you've linked them up to the USB where Windows and the operating system have detected that the controllers are connected. Of course, we will go over the why is my controller not showing up later? This is just the initial setup part. I guess you would say this is the majority of it mostly. As you, what, what, what would you call it, Steve? It just works? Something like that? Um, sir, uh, I believe you mean to say it just works. Exactly. 
but there is still some things that you got to do to set this up. So let's go through that here now. Now with the software, you're going to want to go and download it. It's on our website. Let me see if I go here and we just kind of will open up. All right. All right. We got this right here. Now let's go to, let me get the right keyboard over here. It just works. So we're going to go to thermaltakeusa.com. Yep. Got the internet connected. So this is going to pop up right here. Now, right here above Steve, kind of behind it, Steve and everything's our little chat window. If you guys ever need any support from us, you can feel free to drop a little thing here. Let me uh, move me. Here, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, you want to just, just get a little scooch a little, a little bit, a little, a little scooch, scooch. Let's, Let's go. go. There we a go. New follower. Dive so then we got a little, oh, we have a chat feature right here. You can go in here, click a message, ask us anytime, as long as our chat is open. Uh, we'll be happy to help out with some simple questions for you right there. Camponis, thank you so much for the follow. What's up as well? And I, I missed a slump as well. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate the follows, you guys. Um, you guys are awesome, dude. Thanks. So this is going to be our main page. This is our thermaltakeusa.com page. We do also have thermaltake.com. There's also thermaltake.eau for Australia and all the other regions and everything. But this one is ours. All right. Now, and it's also, if you're within the U.S., downloads and everything are definitely a little bit better here. Now, option-wise, as far as what we got going on for products, you can go to software, but you can also go to support and go to downloads. This is where I recommend that you go to get our latest software version. Now, for us here at Thermaltake, we're going to keep the latest as well as the previous generation server or software here on the system so like if you are having problems with like the new one if it's a compatibility thing maybe go back to the old one if it fixes a problem you know we can report bugs move forward get the new version updated at this moment of this live stream 2.0.6 is the latest version and it actually did just come out uh right towards the end of april so it's actually fairly new we've been keeping up a lot of this stuff and then as you can see previous version was right around uh november almost december of last year and that introduced a lot of the new features like the divider 550 tg ultra that we're using over there so this is mostly just adding in integrating in new products you know we got to add a little icon for it we got to sync it up with everything else as we add new stuff one of the amazing options about software is you basically got free rgb dlc <laughs> i mean it's all free and included you don't have to pay for any of this stuff I mean, there's a lot of other softwares out there. They all got their own thing, but you know, this is ours. There's some free stuff that I've been seeing a lot of the free uh, RGB stuff out there too, where people are making their own user-based versions. They're kind of, you know, I I'd love to see stuff go further and I'd love to see this stuff get a lot easier, but we've definitely spent a lot of time here at Thermaltake getting a lot of stuff integrated. Now with our TTRGB Plus software, I can click on this. I'm gonna download this. It is going to be, as you can see, a little zip file that's gonna be right there. And with that particular zip file, I am gonna then, after I download it, I'm going to extract it, and then I can go forward then with installing it. So once I have the software installed, and I have this all set up like this, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, well, let's just, let's just close this down. Let's just, you know, let's go ahead and we'll exit our software. Now, exiting our software, as I jump back over here real quick, you're going to see that the software and everything went back to an RGB default setting. This is what you should expect for any addressable RGB before you basically get into Windows. Like you're sitting in the BIOS, you're going to get this because it needs Windows to sync up to then go forward to do something else. This is the default look. This is what you should expect on first boot with the software, let alone just being able to get just a basic readout on the LED screen, but really not expecting too, too much further until we get our software installed. Now with this, our software and everything, because we already have a profile and all that stuff set up, it's gonna be a little bit uh, more, you know, make, make it a little bit easier here for you to kind of zoom ahead. So I'm gonna load the software now. It's gonna pop up a little loading screen like this. You can get a notification that will pop up basically saying, hey, there's a new version of the software out. Um, yeah, it works. I have had some problems with it in the past. I've you know, been told that a lot of that has been fixed, but if you do have concerns about your software, always just select later and you can download and install it manually. You don't have to do the update. In fact, I recommend doing it that way not necessarily having to uninstall the old software, but just installing the new software over the top 
versus doing the updated feature because I've seen some issues with the updates and the last thing I want is my RGB to have a problem. So I have not had an issue doing it that way like all this time. So that's why I recommend it like that. Okay. Now with your system, when you set it up, if you have one controller, two, like I said, it doesn't matter. I can name this one five. I can name this one seven. Doesn't really matter what you call anything after one, but I highly recommend whatever's one should be one. You should never start with like four and go four, five, six, or do anything like that. The software works the best and is most compatible when it bases itself off of one. And then anything after that will be easy because it's just going to sync to one. Okay. So if there's anything I can give you to try to not make it even harder, that should be an easy one to help. Okay. Now with these, you're going to be able to select on each of the individual ports. You'll see a cool little like connection here saying that this is number two and it's highlighted on the controller. And one of the nice, awesome features about that is once you've selected onto that port, like you can see here, it gives you a visual indication of what that is. So right there, I can tell that that's a ring trio fan. I'm going to go back over here to my software so you can follow along and you're going to see my ring trio fan located right here. Now I can click and drag this and drop it or like with this one right here, because of all, let's you know, switch back. See, that's going to be the middle fan that you see right there. And I can go back over here on this one and I can also do something as simple as just double clicking on it. So double clicking on the actual icon after highlighting it will give you that feature just the same as you can see, or you can drag and drop them. Now, if you selected the wrong thing, no problem. You can just drag them off just like so, or you can do a full reset. Doesn't really matter, but this is one of the first steps that you need to take in regards to configuring your RGB once everything is up and connected. So let's just go through the process. Um, let me see if, you know, let me see if I could probably pop this up too. Hold on a sec. Uh, let me see where is there we go just give you give you a little little camera right there so as you can see up there in the corner i got that and i can i can see here i can click see how this is in real time selecting trio selecting trio right number four what's number four is that the top fan nope that's the one on the inside there for the aio all right boom number five bottom aio boom very straightforward showing you how to set this up now we'll move on to controller number two all right so that's our back fan we see that right there we'll select on that actually you don't have to you just have to single click it i thought you had to double click it for whatever reason and then we got a top fan and it's real easy because these are all trios so a lot of this should be pretty painless should be pretty painless for you guys now we have that set up now if we click on something like this we're like oh, okay well where's four? Oh, well four must not be plugged in oh five no, we've already gone through all of our fans, so we know everything's good. So four and five are going to be left alone. You don't need to put anything there. You don't want to put anything there, and you'll just more or less leave those blank. This is going to tell the system that nothing's there. Don't worry about it. It's a feature that we have built into the software, too, because if your fan fails, it will pop up and tell you that it has failed based on the RPMs as a safety measure. So pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff. All right. Let me catch up on chat real quick. They're mm. having dinner and I want dinner now. <laughs> I know. I saw a lot of the taco talk and everything. That's pretty funny, man. That's pretty funny. Okay. All right, cool. So moving forward with that, we have the software. We have this set up for our two controllers. We've gone ahead and we've saved that configuration. Now, if you have, see, Ring Plus, here is our Flow RGB. This is our AIO. Here is our Pure Plus. Now, if you guys didn't know, we have Pure Plus in both ARGB and and in TTRGB Plus. So keep that in mind when shopping Amazon. We also have radiators with LED strips, pumps, of course, our water blocks, VGA cards, our VGA blocks, LED strips, RAM blocks, RGB fittings, more fans. And then of course, as we cycle down here, you'll see other things like our memory covers, uh, case control stuff. There's those Ring Trio 20s, um, of course, Ring Quads, other AIOs, distro cases, and even our other custom distro plates. Now, one thing when you're going and doing this particular type of setup here that you'll want to understand is with the setup, you might not see what you have listed down here below. For example, I got Ring Trio fans, but I'm not seeing Ring Trio here as an option to select. I'm like, why is it, well, where to go? Why is there no Trio there? This is likely because you plugged in 
the trio fan into a controller that was made before the trio came out it's that simple it doesn't know what it is because it didn't exist when it was made so this is why i always say to kind of keep everything together for the most part most builds like 9.9 .9 out of 10 you're going to run all the same fans so it shouldn't be an issue but it is definitely something to bring up or maybe you just got the controllers mixed up too and you got you know something for a water block and the fans mixed up but yet you don't see the water block on the water block one but yet you see the fan you don't and you don't see the fans on the fan one you just got to switch them and then everything just works just works it just, just works. works it gets kind of crazy like that but it's so straightforward if you understand it like me and steve do because we deal with it so much like every single day versus every somebody that's day. looking at it for the very first time trying to understand all this stuff and how it's all going right and uh you know not just uh at work either at home because we all rock that at home absolutely absolutely now ghost is asking a question he goes is there a way to update the firmware on those to add new model fans that come out later no the firmware is not updatable you do not update the firmware there's no way to update the firmware as far as i have been told without and like basically an internal machine the firmware and the controllers is not designed to be upgraded it's just more or less there to be labeled so you know basically what it is or where it came from from an internal technical standpoint for someone like us like we didn't know what case it was in it was just a bare pcb what is this right um without looking at oh does it have a notch does it have the dot on it does it say temp i mean these are things that are just more in the technical internal sides of things but if it makes it easier for you you don't you can't update it so don't worry about it most of the controllers as I go in here to the settings option, and I'm gonna go down to, um, let me see, right here, auto update, controller firmware, 303. That's pretty standard for most of the controllers. Most of the controllers of the newer stuff is all 303. If it's not, it doesn't mean you need to update it. It doesn't mean that if you don't have 303, it doesn't work. That has nothing to do with any of that, okay? See? So that's just an, like an easy thing also because we are using the tough liquid ultra aio there is a firmware in there for the screen and that's 1040 i haven't seen anything newer it's a fairly new product it's not really going to have too much of an option but we also do have some newer features in here as well that we'll talk about here soon um i don't want to get too far ahead i don't want to get too far ahead uh question from lobster um with regards to fans and AIO coolers, mm. if I already have the quad fans and I want a new cooler, is there an option to get just the cooler and not the fans? Well, it okay, cooler's a pretty generic thing. Which, which cooler? I mean, if you're just looking at like an AIO, no. All the AIOs come with the controller. You can't get one and save like it. I mean, it's not It's not like even, it's not even 50 bucks. It's, it's not that expensive, the controller. It's not a $100 controller or anything. I would say that's like worth it to get without. I mean, I guess uh, at the bare minimum, you can compare the single pack fans with and without controller to see the price point. I mean, it's not much, so don't worry about it. But cooler with no fans. I mean, if you have, we don't sell the AIO without the fans. They all come with fans because like, and as much as it would be a nice benefit for someone like you, we have to worry about the people that would buy it and put it in and expect that it just works. Because it has to just work. Because it has to just work out of the box for like legal things. <laughs> so as much as I agree completely with where you're going with that, we also have a certain like, you know, limitation on some of that kind of stuff. Like it, it's kind of like with, with cases, we would have cases like the P3. The P3 was a case that never had a fan. You know, like all of our cases have fans. And you know, that's because of our good friend Steve over at Gamers Nexus and other reviewers and everything that always talk about what just the case comes with. They only use what the case comes with. And like the P3 was like, it didn't come with any fans. So it was like an interesting topic, right? Compared to like all the other cases that come with fans. So stuff like that is a little bit different, but you know, you can understand how the market goes and the safety standards and everything. We got to think about everybody, but it's, it's a great way to go. I want the new cooler with the LED screen, but the wife is getting red in the face. <laughs> It's a pretty cool screen and all that. The tough fans aren't bad either. I mean, you know, you could take a little break from your RGB on that, depending on where the AIO is going to go to. Uh, the tough fans ain't bad, but it looks kind of nice with the the RGB as well. I mean, I'm I'm I can't I'm a big fan of RGB. It's it's kind of hard to, yeah, right. E. 
Steve, we Steve, we, fans. exactly. We. So if you got a controller and the option's not showing up for what you have plugged in there, even though you click on it and you highlight it and it turns red and it's not, it's like, what is it? Where is it? I think somebody was asking about like, I only see W4, I don't see W7. Here's a perfect example of that. You don't see W7 because that requires a temp controller. Therefore, that's never going to show up on the list. Now, one thing to mention um, that I'll kind of cover a little bit more in the troubleshooting side as we're getting, you know, Closer and closer to that. But do the controllers show up if I don't have anything plugged into them? Yes. The controllers do not require you to plug something in in order for the controller to show up here. But as far as you clicking on this and it doing anything, that will require you to plug that in. So when you're doing troubleshooting to the bare minimum, the controllers will show up in the software. You can use the software on multiple systems to cross check to see what's going on. Bad USB headers, BIOS related issues, OS related issues. So there's a lot of things. We'll be talking about net framework here in a little bit as we get past the little software tutorial. Now, net framework. Right. And then of course, always make sure that you save your changes so the software knows exactly what's where. This will make everything easy going forward once you get to your lighting section. Now with our TT Sync feature, which is on the other side, as you can see here, I use our Argent M5 and Argent K5 mouse and keyboard. And these guys will sync right up as well with my software, making it, you know, a nice total package. Of course, I can install iTake and do my own independent thing like that. And I can degroup these, which we'll talk about in just a minute, but you do have a nice convenient feature. You know, you get more TT, more TT syncs with more TT. It works really easy, okay? works it just works moving over to my pc now with the my pc this is going to give you a little breakdown this is our system right here we have a ryzen 7 5800x and we get an rtx 3080 in here for the graphics card with our divider 550 of course we're also doing our tough ram xg for that sweet rgb synchronization as well as performance there and you know we're showing some memory we got some this and this and we got some voltages we got some temperatures loads so this is a nice convenient way especially with a new operating system to kind of see where we're at is that is that temperature doing good does that look normal to you or is it 90 because you forgot to take the sticker off or you forgot to put the thermal paste in these are a lot of cool things that can give you just right away like oh, okay that's somewhat normal you know or if you have questions you know you can always feel free to ask but at least you know it's very important to know <clears throat> that plastic man it's always that plastic when fan boxes won't show is the best approach to uninstall on device manager. No, device manager will not have anything to do with that. Um, it really is more or less you kind of pushing the OS to do something where it's not, it, it can be a lot of things, right? So we'll, we'll talk about it, we'll talk about it. Yeah, yeah, I know I can understand that. I guess I and then of course, if you do have fans, there is a fan speed section. You have full PWM controls within a 10% increment. So I can go in here, I can set PWM on, and I can adjust where I want that. If I want it to be only up to 80%, if I want it to be something quiet down to 50, it will initiate silent mode, or I can go all the way up to 100%, meaning that the fan will spin to its maximum RPMs if needed based on the load from the temperature that the system is getting. So that way, like, you know, you're just browsing the desktop and stuff like this or the internet, you know, watching Twitch, for example, you know, a lot of this RPM stuff will be nice and quiet and still cool. You won't have to worry about it. Once you start ramping some stuff up, you start streaming, you start gaming, these bad boys will then also increase in speed and performance. And I mean, just the same, I can turn PWM off right here on this fan and you'll start seeing this fan ramp up right away. So this fan's gonna jump up here. It's already maxed out about 1500. Most of these fans will run around. I think they're rated for about 1500 RPMs, but as you can see, some of them can go a little bit higher depending on what it is. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's actually a pretty decent fan. I'm curious which fan that is, but uh, we can, you know, you can check a lot of this stuff. It's gonna say one dash one. This means that this is the fan in port one on controller one, okay? So going all the way back here, that's this guy. All right. Yeah, we'll save. Fan speeds, check. Here's all my wonderful fans. The more you got, the more the merrier. They're going to keep showing up. Don't you worry. 
you can hook up a lot of fans here. It is not a problem. And of course, we do have profiles for this. So you can go in here if you want to set a PWM setup, you want a silent mode setup, you can make different profiles right here just as easy too. Okay? Jumping over to lighting. Now, jumping over to lighting, we've been seeing this nice turquoise color that we've had here in our uh, divider 550. Let's bring it back up. All right, so we got our divider 550 system right here. You can see those beautiful trio fans there in the front, as well as across the top, back and side. And we want to change some colors. Now, basically, let me see. Let's go to a different profile. Let's let's make a new profile. New profile, profile two. Let's switch over to profile two. And we're going to select all. And uh, we're going to be on static. And uh, let's see, single. And then let's just default. Okay. So let's just default. Oh, we'll go to customize. Get it back to... Um, I think what you, everybody's going to see off the bat, right? It's going to be RGB spectrum. Default apply. Whoops, I got to select all here. Oh, I'm just trying to get this all set back up. So this is going to be, I think it's, is it RGB spectrum or is it, see, there's all these, all these modes. I'm trying to remember what's the, what's the actual, is it just swirl? I spectrum. Is it spectrum? It is RGB spectrum, but RGB spectrum is a different RGB spectrum because this is more of like a, fade in and out type of scenario versus just a ring spinning around and around um as you would see but this is gonna the colors are all gonna change just like you see this is all gonna happen in real time like as you see right here get that bad boy a little bit more in the center so you're gonna have a variety of options as far as like what you can do just check this out guys check this out so if i select all this is going to be the most straightforward and easiest way to go with this i can go in here i can select static i can select single it's gonna open up these options and then i can pick a color like say i want to go a nice dark blue i'll click apply i'm going to click apply to that that color is going to apply over here to this if i want to do the same thing and change it i'll click select all I'll go here, I'll pick a green color, and I'll click apply. And you'll see that instantly change to green. This is different than what ARGB stuff does. We are instant with our connections, where other stuff can take a little bit of a delay, and you just got to kind of wait a little bit. Now, with other products that you would have in here, like Tough Ram, our Flow RC, as far as like what the little pump things feature in here, and I can go back, we can do like a cool little gift thing and everything. I'm trying to think of what we would have. I don't know if I got anything uh, downloaded on this, but we can always download and add some other stuff. We can put a little TT logo in there. Click OK, click OK, and click Apply. OK. OK. Tevin Sex got an interesting question. Hmm. Is there a way to make an LED shine black so we can do black color, black color patterns? You know, there is a, a way to do like an off option to do a black or like a... We, 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 there's a couple of different modes that they have. Um, if I go into like ring trio and you go into this, you would have, uh, the options, you know, kind of not to really go through all of the individual options and everything, but something like radar mode is going to give you, let me see, make sure I got select all on here and I'm going to apply that. And then that's going to rotate around, meaning that when it's off, the color and everything is going to be the on and it's going to cycle through each of the individual rings. For example, these are ring trio fans. So you have three separate rings like this. I can do something where I can select the individual rings themselves. Like if I want the inner hub to then be blue, I can do that. And then if I want to go through and like kind of go, all right, I want this blue. I want this blue. We do something simple like that. And then if you have more fans, you can continue. It's actually kind of neat how this works. And then I can set up like that. I can click apply. And then what that's going to do is that as it rotates around, once it gets to the middle part, the middle part's going to be blue. So you get like a nice little combo and you can mix it up like that. Now, going back on your question, we also have this other mode called black hole. Now, black hole is a pretty neat option. It's basically the reverse. So as I select everything, we'll go back to like a blue color. We'll click apply. And this is more or less keeping everything lit up and basically giving you that little black out space that you got there for the other rings going around. So there's a lot of features. I mean, 
Look at all of these different features, from our general features to our sound-based features to stuff like if you just want your temperature or weather, the weather thing's crazy with the Amazon Alexa stuff, and then the multiple devices like Aurora, which is very similar to a lot of other stuff motherboards do. If you want it to match like a motherboard lighting, because that we can't do. That's only with them, right? So that would be like a separate system. You kind of want it to match. They got that. Black hole, shooting star, and even twinkle. There's some really neat little features in here um, that we would have that just give a like a total uniqueness to it. Always make sure you're going to click apply all to do stuff. So you get that little like in and out kind of look, and then that's going to cycle through like all the fans. You could do a million different things with this. You don't have to have one fan do one thing. Each fan can do its own mode. I mean, if I want this to blink and I want this one to twinkle and I want this one, let's say, well, I'd have to click apply. So then I gotta go twinkle, twinkle, twinkle like that. But then for example, this last one, I want it to be static. I can do that. And then now you'll see that you'll have those three spinning where that one right there is just like a solid color. So like if you want to do some really neat modes where you only want some of them flashing or you want something static or a different color or a different mode, you have like everything under the sun in here. And a lot of this stuff can all be grouped together. For example, like this, I can sync my mouse. I can sync my keyboard. I can sync or desync my fans, meaning that if I want my fans to be separate from my memory, because I want my memory to do something crazy cool different, and then all my fans do something a little bit more chill mode, I can set it up that way. And then I can save it as a profile. And then each one of these profiles, I can just make another one, make another one, make another one. And I can do stuff like game mode. I can do stuff like movie mode. I can do all kinds of different things that I want to do. All the click of the profiles. I don't have to go back in here and click each one of these little individual things to do something just to change something. So use the profiles as your advantage. Use the groups to your advantage. A lot of this stuff is straightforward once the controller shows up. Once everything connects up, most of this stuff should be pretty straightforward. All right, all right. Questions, questions, questions. It just works. <laughs> it just works. You took you took the breath out of me, man. Now, if you want it, okay. So you asked Tevin's asked, is it can we get actual black though, not just off? Well, off is black. There is no black LED. If you're, it, I don't know what, I don't know how else to give you more, my friend. The only option to do is like the reverse, like the black hole, where you would have the animated movement be off. Does that make sense? Like the animated movement is considered off versus the animated movement is on where everything else is off in the background, highlighting it. It's nice that we got both sides of the fence, but that's basically the way it works. And that's really the most that we can do. But because I know a lot of people ask, we do have a light feature, we do have an off button, and you can always save a profile that's just called off or blackout, whatever you wanna do. You don't want any LED lights at all, but you want your fans, you want your pump to do something and have a screen show up on there like my liquid temperature that i have up here that says it's minus 30 and that's probably because i just need to update this is what version am i running on here anyway i didn't even look so this is 203 so we're a little outdated on the software i honestly hadn't updated because i wanted to show you guys how to update it too but changing stuff like this can change that right there applying that i mean i can even turn this off you might not want to but i even have a feature for that there too and the thing that's neat about a lot of this just to cover a little bit on um the new pumps with led screens is that you do have some nice little color options in here too so as you see that i got a black background and i got this creeping up here as far as the temperature being a blue we got white for the text and then we got another black for the other visual color. I can go in here and I can kind of click on this and we could throw some red in there. I can click apply. That's going to throw a little ring around it. That's kind of neat. And then you can kind of more or less see that even from afar, how fast something like that will change is I'll select green. I'll change green. Now I got a cool little green and black kind of look going on. it. Maybe I want to change this turquoise and make it red because it's temperature and I'm worried about how hot it's going to get. You can do all kinds of neat little things like this and kind of set this up. You have your little numbers over there. You got presets, you got the fun little color wheel. And of course you even got brightness. Now the brightness is actually kind of cool. If you're light, like me, gaming late at night, you might not want too much RGB at two in the morning, right? Maybe it's, ah, it's just a little bit bright. You're watching a movie. Maybe you're playing a game and it's a dark game like Elden Ring and you're exploring a cave and your RGB is like, dude, 
Bro, I can't I even see what's gonna attack me next. <laughs> you need a lantern. Here's RGB. <laughs> exactly. Boom. And then you can, yeah, you could max out your RGB on that, but it's nice. And it works with all the fans, all the blocks. You can get a cool little like subtle lighted mode with that. And I think that's really, really neat. Maybe TT can break the law of science and invent lights that emit black. You know, that'd be really neat if we could do something like that. Um, but yes, unfortunately, not yet. <laughs> and, like I, and like I responded, you know, if we could do that, let's be honest, we'd probably just make a dark saber first. Absolutely. You know what I mean? That is dark, those dark saber blades look pretty, looking pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. All right. So a lot of that stuff is all how this kind of sets up. The group thing is a nice feature to have. It gives you a nice little option for that um for somebody that's looking to uh have multiple things i mean most people are going to be straightforward you have a couple of fans and an aio this should be super easy for you to set up you just need to know the one two three on your tt rgb getting this set up getting the controllers detected selecting what it is going into lighting setting your color and clicking apply you're done you don't even have to necessarily go into fan speeds. It will all be defaulted for safety reasons for you, but feel free to go in and mess with every single option we give you because that's why we're here is to give you more options. It's how you use it. That is what matters. A lot of stuff with this. A lot of stuff. This is our new 2.0 software. 206 is the latest. We're always updating this as we get more and more stuff coming out there. And everything in the latest version will always be the one that's going to have the most compatible products. So if you're getting a new thing from us, then you want to make sure you have the latest version. If what you have works, you don't have to necessarily upgrade because if you didn't add any of the new features, it's kind of like how they do BIOSes where a new CPU comes out and the new BIOS, you need that for the new CPU, but you don't necessarily have to stress about updating so, so much. It can, um, you know, it can be a benefit and it can also be a problem. All right, does anybody have any questions on this before we go forward with uh, the troubleshooting side for today? Anybody? Let's take a look at some updates here. We got, oh, we got our, I got our cool little ViewSonic monitor. We got that going on there. Let's check for some other updates that we don't want Windows 11 just yet. We're staying on Windows 10. Oh my goodness, look at those updates. So here's something that's very important and why I waited to do this. You see right here where it says cumulative update Windows 10 version. Uh, wait, wait, I missed it. Net framework right here. See this? You need the net framework updates in order for it to work. Yeah, I have a previous version, so I know that that works, but this updates a lot. When this updates, it can break your RGB and it can be a little of a pain. And unfortunately, there's nothing we can do here on our side to fix it the way Windows keeps changing that framework. And as far as I'm aware, this is the same for everybody else. We're all in the same boat when it comes to the way these Windows updates work. So we're gonna go through some Windows updates here. Let this kind of sit as we do some troubleshooting. We're gonna reboot this and see what happens. And then if we do have an unfortunate issue where it does desync, we'll show you how to fix it. So let, let me hope everything lines up here live to be able to show you guys some fun little stuff and definitely help you out with your RGB. So let's go ahead and let this run. We're gonna let that run for a little bit right there. Our software's up and running. We're good to go. That's not gonna matter. Uh, what's gonna matter is after the reboot. So we'll be going forward with the, you know, getting the reboot and everything like that. But BIOS update is definitely important. That's gonna affect especially stuff like your RGB memory and how that all syncs up. Surprisingly enough, if you didn't know, your BIOS is gonna have the XMP profiles for RAM and memory. Hey. We're Thermaltake, we're kind of new to the game, but guess what? We've been doing our homework and getting all of our updates for our memory out to all the big motherboard companies. So if there is a problem with the LEDs, maybe not syncing up, not showing up, or even XMP profiles, where it doesn't even say Thermaltake, it says something wrong, you might need to update your BIOS to get that with our new memory that we have coming out. And I'm looking at a lot of people that either have DDR4 or DDR5 for that matter with the newer stuff, coming out with either Z690 or 790 going forward with that. Those BIOS updates need to have that in order for the memory to work, not just with the XMP for those nice little performance increases, but also for the RGB synchronization. It is all kind of built in there on that. And we have to make sure we get our part in there too so everything communicates. That's where all this kind of goes on. The only thing that you really kind of run into with memory is that motherboards can control it as well as us. And sometimes you'll have both trying to do it at the same time and that's why we have features like this one in here, 
or if I go into my settings option, I have a tough RAM feature. Now, if you want the motherboard software to just control it, you like the feature, it makes it more easy. You can click this box right there, fully disables the memory. The memory now no longer is controlled by our software. After checking this and closing this, I recommend that you do a shutdown of the system, not a restart, but a shutdown of the system. Let it sit for a second, turn it back on, you should then see the memory being free re released from our grasp <laughs> here, and it won't even show up. It won't be in the group anymore. It won't be in anything anymore on that. And now you have the full control of that. I have not seen that so much on the motherboard side of things, but I know that we can do what we can for our side of stuff. Same with like location features, Razer Chroma synchronization, and even convenience features like starting it with Windows Startup. I always like to have this enabled so that it just auto loads on boot. And then I can also check this to just minimize it because I don't want to see all that screen. Once my RGB is all set up, I just want it to load up, run, and just forget it. You know, just get it set up and forget it. So this is a nice little easy setup for you on that with the general settings. Notifications have some cool little features to it. The one that I like to highlight the most is the CPU one, where if I turn this feature on and my CPU temperature is less than zero Celsius or the value I enter, it's going to tell you, hey, man, something's going on. You need to turn this thing off now. Let me show you. Go in here. Let's set our value to, hmm, let's say, uh, prompts the user to shut down the PC to avoid damage. So let's say, uh, oh, no, no more things going there. 35. Let's go ahead and we'll turn this on. Wait, what temperature are we actually at? Hold on. So we're at 58. Go back here. Prompts to shut down the PC. I'm trying to think. I want to see if I set it to 50. If the CPU is greater than, oh. Yeah. Wait, wait. Am I thinking of this wrong, Steve? Am I backwards on this? Help me. Oh. Prompts it to 90. Wait, wait. I'm trying to think. Wait, wait, wait. What do I do? What do I do? Oh, I'm watching my downloads too. If the CPU is greater than 10 C, whoops, it didn't say it. 10 C. We got this. And then this should prompt it. I might have to reboot for this to take effect because we're doing all these Windows updates right now. But either way, that's what this feature does. This is gonna give up and it's gonna give you a prompt basically letting you know that. Another thing that's in here too is uh, the memory. Oh, oh, I know why. I know why, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. I just, oh no, I didn't disable the tough RAM because I was gonna say, I thought I, because I disabled the tough RAM that that would affect it. But the other thing that I like in here too is the load setting. So like if the CPU load gets like too high, you can have all the LEDs switch to a different color. So that's kind of neat, giving like a visual indication. Say you're not even looking at a screen or you don't have a screen and it's over there and you're looking at it, oh, that's blue. That's blue. All right, I'm gonna go make a sandwich, do whatever, come back. Oh, oh, it's red. Oh, dude, something, you know, it gives you a visual indication, right? Same thing with like a lot of other stuff that's out there um, and that stuff too. Account options, you have this. This is mostly for the Amazon Alexa for the voice activation. We have this whole voice thing. I'm not even gonna get into that. It's all tied in Amazon. You can have Amazon Alexa go like, hey. And I'm, I'm actually concerned about saying that and affecting anybody's Amazon Alexas at home. So sorry about that in advance. <laughs> but there is a setup for that as well as a software app too for your phone. If you really can't use this and you have to use your phone instead, we have that kind of a feature there too. Auto update, turn that on and off. That's pretty straightforward. Um, setting up the boot animations. Now here's something that's different too, is that when you go to boot the system up, you can have it show one thing and then have a standby screen and then have a login screen. So it kind of gives you some different options that you can do there. You can upload your own versions, set your own colors with that. It's kind of neat. Same thing with the screen on the, uh, the RC memory or for the divider for that front panel there. And then about us is gonna give you the versions like we were talking about. Um, all that stuff like my fake IP address and everything else in there. I'm not worried about it. It's not real, okay? So don't worry about it. Okay, let's see where we are. Are we at? No, no, no. Stay on Windows 10. Leave me alone. Okay. 
Now we are at the troubleshooting side and I am trying to see if I can break this. We are trying to see what we can do. The software is still running. But right now we have all the LED lines. Everything is off. Let's turn everything back on. Let's just keep it simple. Static. Blue. We static blue. We static blue. Static blue. We good. Right? And then as you see right there, the memory is off. And then we also got the like the red and the green around the thing. But we because we, we had the memory, we turned the memory off. Again, like I said, when you turn that feature off, shut the system down, reboot it back up, everything's good. If you want to turn it back on, rinse and repeat, turn that feature off so the memory turns back on, shut the system down, turn it back on and everything. I'm personally trying to break it with uh, this Windows update here first. Let me... Before I reboot, why is this taking so long? Come on, Windows! Steve, why? Why does it take so long, Steve? Because software. So I disabled Tough RAM for Team Group RAM. I mean, if you go into the group, you can turn the RAM off if you want the RAM to not be affected by Select All. So like if you have Select All, like also too, this does stretch out a little bit. So it, it, it's kind of neat that it has that. But if I do Select All and say I pick Red and I would click Apply, everything would change that's tied to the group. If nothing's grouped, then it's only gonna be whatever's on this section versus this section versus this section and so on, okay? But if you want the convenience, you can go ahead, group everything up, have a blast with it, right? Get this all set up like that. Look, apply my keyboard. Like, look, they're like, my keyboard just turned red. My mouse, red. So a lot of that stuff is pretty straightforward now that, and then of course, we jump back over here. I mean, look at, look at this thing. Look at this thing, look. It's actually, it looks like hot pink, the color that I picked. It wasn't necessarily red. It was just, it was like hot pink. Hot pink? Pretty popping though, let me tell you. This is bright, baby, let me tell you. Okay. So you have some fun, different things that you can pick, the different colors, you know, as far as like where you want to go with all this. I mean, oranges and all that. The other thing I like too that's neat is that as you click on this, you can, it, it's, it's kind of like a quick little click. You can't really drag it and roll it around for whatever reason. You also have customization. You can do patterns and all that stuff. I'm not even gonna get into that. Feel free to knock yourself out with all the lighting on there, okay? Make sure you can set a profile. It's an easy thing to do. Do your, Get it all set up first and you don't have to, you, you can just forget it. And that's basically the way we wanna roll with a lot of this stuff. All right, where are we at? So it's still, okay. Let's do this update. Let's let this one roll. Let's see what happens. And then while we wait for that, a couple of questions in the chat. Yeah, I've been uh, talking a bunch. I'm so sorry, my God. Oh my gosh. Yeah, what's up? Uh, first of all, uh, Tef and Sack says, uh, once the TT lighting is applied, does the program need to stay open for lights to work or can you close it fully afterwards? Once the TT lighting is applied, does the program need to stay open for the lights to work or can you close it fully after? So with the software, it has to be running down by the clock in the little breakdown thing in here. But as far as this goes and how you have this set up, yes, I can close that and not have it a part of this at all, but it does still need to be running in the background to give you more or less the answer. As you see, there's a system right there. And is if we went here, and you can also go in here, by the way, and do the start and the launch like if you want it to pop up, I can click on this and it will load this up here. You can double click on it like everything else, standard Windows thing, but you don't have to minimize it and leave it running there. I know how that is for a lot of people. You don't have to worry about that. Um, and then again, the minimize feature is pretty good too. But if you do exit this, you will see everything resets. So then stuff like that's gonna go back into like the default RGB mode, memory and all that stuff's all gonna be defaulted. Uh, when you do something like that. And then uh, we are now installing. We are now installing. And with that, uh, good now. Thank you very much for that hashtag hydrate. It's about that time. Yeah. Oh man, a lot, a lot of stuff. The LCD screen does look pretty good, man. I'm really digging the resolution with it. 
I'm, I'm excited to see too, like other stuff, like our, our new TT dude. I really want our new TT dude in there as well as some other stuff. Maybe we even do like a fan, like we should do like a, like one of those like fan competition things, Steve. Or not fan, but like fan art like things. Ooh, that'd be cool. Yeah, I'd love to see that. Give some people some stuff and everything like that. Ultra. Ultra. Like Ultra your cooling. Okay, come on, Windows Update. Oh, okay. Um, what else was I going to do? Here. While that's going, let me break this even further. Okay. I have right here a bad controller. So this right here is a controller that I have that has more or less caused me some problems. It's got some inconsistencies, like it works, but then it doesn't work. And I'm just, it's not showing up sometimes. Or like if I boot the system up, it just doesn't show. And I'm like, where, where and what's going on? Maybe you're going through a variety of things and you're kind of troubleshooting some stuff. You've, you've done a couple of things with it. Now, with the system on like this, you can easily just pull the power. Pull the power from the controller. Just like that. And then you can see I've unplugged those fans in the front and then on the side. Applying the power back in, you can absolutely do this with the system on. One thing to mention, restarts do zero. Absolutely nothing. Restarting your PC will not fix, will not reset or do anything. It is a complete waste of time troubleshooting your RGB by using reset. You have to shut down. If anything, and you're having New problems, forward, in. shut this oh, down, yeah. pull the power, and push the power button and drain it all the way. It's a weird thing with the USB. It's got to be completely off in order for it to, like, re-trigger. And it's not us. It's USB. It's a huge pain in the butt. But uh, the Data Lord TV, thank you so much for the follow. I um, hope you're enjoying our content here with our 123 RGB. Um but like I said, you can unplug the controller and plug it back in with the power. That will reset everything. It will also reset the RGB connection. So instead of unplugging the little RGB cable and plugging it back in, or even with like the little link cables and everything, the power's a one and done. It does everything. You don't want to pull this out and plug it right back in. Let it sit for a second, but not too long. Come on, guys. Don't be too crazy about that. And then reapply the power. This will reset the controller. Now, if the controller is not showing up and you've reset the power and you're just not getting anywhere, easiest thing to do is process of elimination. Isolate down to one controller. If you're using other controllers, of course you can have them connected and have them powered on so the fans spin, so you don't worry about temperature related issues like tied to your radiator, but at the same time, it's not tied into anything being discovered by the software. So now as you have the USB unplugged, and everything, you can freely go through and kind of, you know, check stuff out on the controller, power cycle the controller and stuff like that, or check these RGB connections. This, for example, with a link cable, like if I was linking one to two and it wasn't working, then I would take the link cable out. I'd pull the connection out of one, but not the power. So everything's still spinning and working, right? I mean, if it's like water blocks, it's not gonna matter. It's just LEDs, right? So you guys understand that part. I can just pull it out of this one and then plug it into here. Does it work? Well, remember, it's going to show up as two, not as one, and that's fine. Do you need anything plugged in? No. But you want to know if it's going to show up. This is ideally determining, is this bad or is this bad? These cables, dude, they can go bad. It blows my mind that it's possible. It's rare, but it can happen, and it's definitely something a lot of people don't think about. Um, it's not the first thing that you want to do but it's definitely something to consider when you're going through so many different options. Again, power cycling the controller is probably the best thing that you can do to do this besides shutting down the PC. This is pretty fairly easy to do, but just keep you know temperatures of the fans responsible for keeping the CPU cool. And definitely don't be doing any heavy loads on the system while troubleshooting your RGB either, okay? And with the controllers and everything that you have like there, these little daisy chain cables could be bad just the same. And um, these power cables, like I said, these little wires can back themselves out of the controller. Plugging those in can matter. Plugging them into there can matter. Anything that's a connection can matter, just like an LCGS uh, liquid-cooled system. 
you know, we got custom liquid cooling. You can have a leak anywhere with stuff like that. Every connection can be a possibility, right? Always. All right. Oh, if you sold a replacement front panel for the View 71 that included a screen, you would buy it. And a lot of that is just maybe we'll come out with a View 71 Ultra later on. You know, this is a newer product that has come out afterwards with the other product. But I get you and I understand a lot of that. Um, I've been trying to figure out what to put in the large open space above the top fan. Mm, a couple of different things that you can do. Me personally, a giant distro plate. Use custom liquid one. cooling right there. But, you know, I mean, how who's else going to look at it good now? You know what I mean? It's just some extra things that you would want to see. I mean, they got a nice front glass panel on there. You really got too many options with it. But, you know, there's some other screens. You could do some little custom mounting in there. It might look quite interesting. The thing that I like, too, if there's anything that I could give back is that this is the little LED screen. You buy this for your memory. It's not attached to the little memory thing. You get basically the little box like this. Double-sided tape can go a long way, and you can stick this thing literally anywhere. And then it just requires a USB connection, so you can have some fun with this, doing some modding things, too. I, I want a bigger one, personally. I think this is cool for the memory, but for a case or even something like a power supply, I'd love to see something really neat on, like, a power cover. It's some of the fun, you know, feedback options we'd like to give. Okay, let's see where our system's at. Restart required. Let's go. Restarting required. Now, this is going to restart our system. A lot of times, eight, nine out of 10 Windows updates that require an update, especially to your framework, can affect your RGB where the controller is just no longer being found. Don't think that the controller is broken. Don't think that it's a physical connection issue. It is more or less, for the most part, related to your operating system and a lot of that stuff syncing up. Now, an easy way to fix this is after, because it, it asked me to do a restart. You can do an update and shutdown feature and that can help you eliminate that problem. But a lot of people don't do that. They just click on the restart button because it's right there in front and you're almost never going to get anybody to think a different way on that. And that's fine. Most of the time, you shouldn't have a problem, but you could. Let's see. It just works. Let's see what we do here. With that many ring, oh, with that many LEDs on the ring quad, does it include ports for liquid cooling to keep the LEDs cool? It should. It literally should, man. I'm actually quite surprised how cool the fan is. Like one of the things when we were looking at a lot of this was like, with this many LEDs, is the fan going to be blowing hot air? But LEDs don't get hot, so it's not a problem. They it's just, just a, get RGB. It's just something to think about, right? Okay. So we booted up our system. It's gonna kind of recover to where we were. It's got my little notification thing that's popping up here. My software's installing again. Oh, look, it's synced up. Dang it, I didn't get to break at that time. Oh man, I was hoping it was gonna break. So in some cases where, for example, my software's loading up here. Let's, let's just let's, let it fin let's make sure it finishes. Because this is me trying to break it. <laughs> Do you even want to cool your fans, bro? <laughs> Come on. All right, here, let's piss it off. Let's do that. Here, let's let's do even more. Let's go. Let's go into task manager. Come here. Where'd Why do you, you want to make it upset? It oh, I want to make it angry. All right. Oh. So that's closed. So one thing too is you know you got the little thing right there because you'd right click on this bad boy, go to properties, um, you know, advanced. Run as administrator. That's a fun thing to turn on. Let's go ahead and let's load it back up. Let's see if it freezes this time. So that's going to pop up. It's going to tell me. Nope. Wait. Hmm. Later. It loaded, but the window didn't pop up. Okay. Lighting. All right. So everything's here. <laughs> okay. Now you can have a variety of scenarios. So here's something straightforward. If I disconnect the USB, the USB is not working. It's not connected properly and everything. I can have this type of a scenario. I have only unplugged one controller. 
Now, it depends on which controller you have unplugged. For example, with this one, because I just want to make sure I double check, because I unplugged controller number one and number two is daisy chained off of controller number one, everything looks broken. Consider that, all right? Always go back down to just one fan and focus on one fan at a time or one controller at a time, if that makes it even easier for you as far as trying to figure out what's going on with that. You also have two of those cables there off of this big cable thing. Use the other one just to make sure nothing's cut, nothing's damaged. I mean, gosh, look at everything before you even put it in the system. But that's something I'm expecting you to already do with everything else that's going in there. Now, as I've gone and I plugged the connection back in, and we've already had a profile set up and established, we're gonna wait and see what happens here. This is gonna be the little time frame of once you have it connected up, as far as if it's going to be able to resync back up, or if you're gonna have more or less a particular problem. As you can see here with the way I've done it, we've waited a little bit. Let's go and move over to our software side of things. So here on our software, oh, look. Oh, wait, wait, that, that was unintentional. It, it just crashed. Works. The software crashed. I got it to break. So now that the software crashed on me, and this is because just like you at home, troubleshooting your RGB, unplugging and plugging stuff back in and out, these are where you can run into these snares. I'm trying my best here for you guys, all right? So let's go ahead and let's launch the software again and see what happens. Hang on with me, guys. We got a lot going on today. But man, did we want to show it. Okay, so it loaded up. It popped up this feature again. Let's cancel that. As you can see, our software still doing it because we have it enabled to minimize on startup. So that's why it goes bye-bye right off the bat. That is a feature that is built into this guy right here, okay? So um, that's up to you on what you wanted to do there. Controllers are gonna show up. We have our color back, as you can see on the system, okay? Hey, Mike. Go. Is this a Twitch stream wants to let you know that he just wants to say we're awesome. No, you're awesome. Hey, Thank thanks so much. It's a Twitch stream. Appreciate it. Okay. I messed with the daisy chain cable. I disconnected it a little bit, but it's the daisy chain cable. It's not the cable that's plugged in to the primary controller, right? So now you're gonna have a scenario where, just to give you guys a little bit better of a look, where stuff, one's working and the other one's not. What's the reason? Could be a loose wire, connections not fully seated, stuff like that with a daisy chain cable. Remember, you're gonna get a daisy chain cable with each controller. Most of the time you might have an extra daisy chain cable laying around. Usually got an extra one if you're dealing with two or three controllers. There should definitely be an extra one that you're not going to need. And it's an easy thing to switch out to see if it, you're running into a scenario like this where one's working, but not two. And this relates as well back to the software where you can see I got one here, but I don't got two. Now, if I kind of push that connection back in, let's see. Two shows right up. So again... You don't have to restart, shut down the system in order for controllers to show up or go away. It will work in live time. This is a big step, I think, for a lot of people. Save you the time and effort of shutting down each and every time you do something. You don't need to do that. The only thing you need to do is power cycle the controller. And as I've been saying, removing the power and plugging it back into the controller is all you got to do in regards to that. Okay. All right. Now let's see if I can, okay, let's do this. All right. Sorry, we're taking a little bit longer here. We got a lot of stuff going on. I'm gonna be wrapping it up here soon. We're gonna be wrapping it up here soon. It is the price of RGB for RGB demand sacrifice. We'll be doing more of this, but it's always a nice little refresher course. Now, this is a bad controller. This controller right here has been giving me intermittent issues mostly with this usb it's really been i don't know what's been going on but i have confirmed that sitting here with like the the connection like this and say i got i got uh this plugged in sitting here and kind of flexing it one way or the other i could do this and hold it and it will work as soon as i let go it goes right back to rainbow so that to me 
is telling me that something is loose on the inside here with this connection. Now, the same thing can apply to the daisy chain too. Mostly not necessarily with this side. This side's pretty solid, but when you're considering the daisy chain coming out of here, the other end still has to go into this side for controller number two or whatever you got. So you always have to consider with this. So let's show you guys a little bit more about our TTRGB. Now these controllers are actually pretty easy to uh, take apart. There's only four screws in each of the four corners. And one thing, if you're just not getting nowhere with it, it's not registering, it's not showing up. You're just like, hey man, what's going on? Why, why can I just not get nowhere? We will want to maybe look to see if there's just something obvious. And I've told a lot of people this, this ain't really all that bad. I like that it's not glued together or anything like that. And I just wanna show you guys here on the stream how this goes. All right, so I got my four screws. I'll take my four screws out there like that. We have our controller. Now this is gonna separate just that easy. You're gonna notice this part comes off real simple and this is more or less kind of attached to the bottom part. But here's here's your tech porn for the week. This is the internal oh, yeah. USB stuff that we got going on here. Things now this right here's- got spicy. This right here is gonna be our dip switch control that we have. This is gonna be our power connection that we have. You're gonna see here, this is where gonna be all those little connectors go, as well as on the other side with the daisy chain link, and then that micro USB. Now this micro Let's USB, I'm showing you guys right here, we got a lot of stuff right. going on. Hey, Smudge, thank you so much. Appreciate the follow, welcome, welcome. Taking this apart, look for the obvious. Does anything look burnt? Does anything look like it popped, cracked, chipped? Anything obvious alone that you're looking at here, you're like, hey, does anything just look, does it, you know? Does it got a smell to it? Does it smell like it's burnt or anything like that? You know how that is, if you do. Um, whoops. And we just went NSFW now. Oh my. <laughs> And, 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 you know, just being able to look at like different things here in regards to all the little chips. I mean, sometimes you might need a magnifying glass to look in a little bit closer to these, but each one of these, it could be one of these, it's a problem. Now, if I'm looking at this for the first time, the obvious thing is going to be this chip right here. I'm going to look to see if this has got a bulge, a rip, a tear, or it just looks like it's just expanded a little bit. Same with this one right here. You have one capacitor on here. I've never seen this have anything go wrong with it but it is a possibility it's also a quick and easy look and then of course you have your micro usb now this micro usb right here I'm trying to think if i get this kind of focus it's got a little blodge of glue that we've put on here to prevent it from being broken off more or less of the port and everything that it can go into so just kind of give a good little overview anything look odd anything look weird now if you want to go a step further with this so that i'm looking at the controller it's got these little clips right here on the sides that kind of hold in. As you can see, the PCBs doesn't it doesn't just it doesn't just fall out, right? So how do you get this out to look at the underside of it? So with the controller, as I'm looking at this one, um, a lot of times I'll just kind of just kind of I just kind of pop it out. Let me see if I can. I like to use some of the stronger things to kind of just do a little oh this one's actually really in there hmm just go slow with it don't try to break the damn thing <laughs> like i'm doing there we go all right and a lot of that is because there's like a little dab of glue that's kind of holding it in there and you just got to more or less kind of free that to be honest i didn't see this on a lot of the older ones this is like a newer thing with some of the newer controllers versus like controllers we did like three or four years ago so it is kind of nice to see that and then of course here on the back side too anything looks obvious burn trace ripped cut anything like that that looks obvious with that you're not going to void your warranty doing this there's no way we're going to know that you did this anyways and it's always a nice little way to kind of take a look at this. Now, if you have a problem with this USB right here, as far as how that's opening and stuff, you can look into this a little bit further, the, the glue and everything. I mean, feel free. You want to take this off and look at that and solder it up and call it a day? 
be my guest. It's absolutely an option for you. We can't stop you anyways, but we do have support here to help you. If you ever feel that this is related to the issue, of course, we're going to troubleshoot some problems and hope that with like stuff like this stream, we'll help you out. Now, as we're going to go and put this back, pretty easy. One, two, three on this side for the three pins. This will give us a nice convenient way to line this up. I'll kind of just kind of snap it back into place. It kind of locks back in there pretty good. And now we got that on. And then we're just going to line up our dip switch with the section there. And we got it back together just like that. So pretty easy. Easy way to check. I mean, if you're exhausting all the simple options already and everything, and you're just curious, this is definitely something that could give you some peace of mind. You know, definitely helps you out. And we don't have a little sticker on this screw that says void warranty either, okay? <laughs> Okay, so now loops. some you're out of your way after all. So some other troubleshooting stuff here as we're getting closer on the troubleshooting stuff. And again, if you guys want more of this, especially on troubleshooting, feel free to let me know. We can definitely add in a stream later on down. I mean, you guys rule. You guys are the chat. You guys let us know. We're happy to help you out. Okay. So now that I got the controller back together, even though I know that it's defective and everything, um, you know, you might not see something. That's okay. So always make sure that with this controller or with that one, test them individually if you're having a problem, mostly because of the way the daisy chain works and understanding what you unplugged and what you still have connected. The power is the easiest way to reset anything if it's not working. I mean, as we kind of jump back over here to the system, you can see our system's working perfectly fine here on this. Now, if I went to say, I'm trying to think on how, ah, ah, here we go. I heard that. They got mad at me. All right. So I went ahead and I just pulled the controller out of the system right now. So as you can see, I got some fans that are off. All right. Here's my bad controller. Don't do this at home. Now, another thing too that I'm going to want to do here is as I'm plugging all of this back in so we can get our RGBs up and running, I'm going to plug the power in last. So I'm going to be connecting all of my fans, the RGB from the USB connect to the motherboard and then the power last. Do not plug the power in first and always make sure the power is disconnected when you're doing any port changes or configurations. Okay, one more fan. And because this one's the daisy chain one, I gotta hook that back up. Plug my USB in. And then finally my power. Now this controller's on a different port, okay? So as you can understand with this being a different controller, as I've swapped that controller out, this is gonna be the experience that I'm gonna have. So as you can see our like purpley hot pink color that we've already had on controller two is still there, but controller one doesn't know what to do because controller one is a new controller. We got three, three trios on the front, plus the two trios on the side. Jumping into the software side of things, this is what we're gonna be greeted as. We're gonna go back over here to connect and we're gonna see controller four because this was the controller that we more or less had set up. Let me see if I can kind of cycle through here. Conveniency, four and five, four and five, highlighting on the AIO that you got right there. So this one has showed up. So let's go ahead and uh, set our fans up. And like I said, this was an intermittent controller and I'm doing my best to break this live to show you how to fix it. 
<laughs> oh, because it just works. Oh, man, it just works. So, and you also be greeted with stuff like this, too, where you'll see some that are just in the default RGB like that. Select all, keep it simple, pick this kind of color, go like that, Whoa. boom. Now everything's changed. Now, this helps that it synced up and it worked, but what if you're having some problems? Let me see if I can break it. T-Town Scott, we got waffles every week. Unfortunately, you missed the one this week, but we will have another one next week, my friend. Next Wednesday. We'll have to enter the water of the video later. Some weird bug is making Chrome eat up all the system and video memory. And you didn't work. Oh, okay, no worries. Yeah, no worries, man. Thank you so much, Ghost, for hanging out. Let me see if this is going to do it. Takes a little bit. Takes a little bit. Oh, you sneak. Here's another thing you should never do. One thing that you never want to do on any system is just shut the power off. One of the baddest things that you can do to affect a lot of connections is just pulling the plug or flipping the switch on the power supply. When you're doing your initial in, initial installs, don't consider this a shortcut. Shut the system down. Turn that off. Avoid corrupting your OS, especially, and corrupting your RGB. Okay, okay, okay. We're going on. We're getting in there. Uninstall in device manager. That'll break it. <laughs> we'll look at that next. And you know, if you guys are getting a new RGB system while I'm waiting for this to boot up, if you guys are getting a new RGB system and you know, your OS is like a year plus old, do yourself a favor and reinstall your OS. Stop holding on. Your optimization of your OS gets really affected over time. All the stuff that you play, all the apps, especially RGB stuff, and you're changing from one RGB software to another, you are not going to get it all off of there. It's hard, okay? If you're going to do like an upgrade or change out like that, do a clean install. Do, do yourself a favor. I know, I know, a lot of people can't do that, and I know it's all, you know, it's it's so hard to do and everything, but I couldn't stress it enough. All right, let's go ahead and let's update our uh, software here through the updater. Let's see what happens. So now we're gonna be updating our software. Like, oh, hey, there's a new version out. Well, we were on 203, and now we're gonna be updating to 206. So this is gonna skip a couple of generations. Let's see what happens. So here we are doing our installation package, good. You'll see our RGB and everything will default back. It's kind of like you consider like a wind, like a, your NVIDIA driver update. You know what I mean? Where like you, you lose a couple of functionality there. You know, this that the monitors will go blank and come back, go blank and come back. Your fans do the same thing. All right, now see it's 206. <laughs> it's that easy. You do not need to uninstall the old version. Just do it like this to install it over the top. Or if you download it manual, just extract it and run the download and you'll be good to go. Ah, mm-hmm, okay. Now you'll be greeted by this message. It's basically just a photo sensitivity message, you know, for, you know, the unfortunate stuff that's going on. You can click to uh, don't show, you know, it's just not a thing to, you know, we want to make sure everybody understands because, hey man, these things can flash at you pretty crazy. But here's a scenario now, right? Look at this. We got our three fans in the front and they're just stuck in RGB. And you're like, oh, my controller broke. What happened to one? Which it was technically four because we swapped it, if you guys are paying attention, but where to go? All I did was update my RGB. All I did was update my RGB. Where did it go? What do you do? Okay. Well, all right. Where'd that go? All right. Let's go here. Let's close. Right? Let's just... Simplest thing you can do is just exit the software, reload the software, reboot the system. Right? Let's try one at a time. We close the software completely. Let's reopen the software. I mean, we did an update. Where's my controller? Where's that support number I need to call them? It's not working. Right, Steve? Yep. 
Sounds okay. about right. Here's some troubleshooting fun. Where did my controller go? And if you're running with just one, this is what you'll get. Now, one thing to understand too, is that we do put in here tough power series. Like if you have just our AIO, like our tough Ram or our ultra AIO stuff, you're not gonna have a controller. So this message doesn't apply to you, but I know a lot of people don't read this and I get it, but you're not gonna have anything in here in lighting besides the memory and the AIO, cause there is no fan. So there is no controller. So therefore this can be fine depending on what you have plugged in. Also consider this too for ARGB stuff. This is not related to ARGB whatsoever. This does not work with ARGB whatsoever. And if you have an ARGB product, you do not and can and should not install our TT RGB plus software. You're gonna to wanna to use a software with the motherboard. And I know a lot of people, even people that buy an LCGS system, that they'll go straight to our website download our software because it's our fan and think that they need our software in order for the fan to run and they're greeted with this wondering hey what's going on you know what i mean that msi software should be installed in there or whatever it might be asus oris you got a variety of different softwares that you would have so you can be greeted with something like this Sorry, one sec. Okay. Now here's a very unique, here's a very unique scenario with this. This right here, I have set up, let me, I have two controllers. Right now, controller number one is not connected because it's not registering, it's not showing up. Only controller two is showing up. But controller number two is not plugged in to the USB Y adapter at all. It's only daisy chained. So how is it working? How is it that one is plugged into the USB hub and it's giving me rainbow, but number two is daisy chained to controller one and it works. So why is number one not working if number two does work? A variety of options and problems with that. One thing to understand that even though the connection is there, the daisy chain is a separate direction. It's a separate path, right? So the daisy chain can still be working just as much as the daisy chain could be broken and have it where controller two doesn't work, but controller one does and you don't know why. Well, that's easy. Use the Y adapter and plug it straight in. Unplug one and plug it into two. Does two now show up? All right, cool. Go back to one, plug one in, and then double check your daisy chain connection. See if you can get two to show back up. It's not showing back up. Pull the plug out of the controller in one, then pull the plug out of controller in two. Wait a minute, plug one back in, then plug two back in. Follow that kind of steps, one through whatever, always starting at one and always making sure everything connected or daisy chained to it is plugged in sequence wise. Don't unplug everything and then plug in the last one and then plug the first one in last. It's gonna, you know, that path is gonna, you know, connecting and everything easier said than done. Now, what do you do when you have a problem like this? Now I'm just stuck like what's going on with controller number one? Well, let's see. Let's see, let's see. All right, I'm wiggling the connections. Nothing's happening. Pull the plug. Reset the controller. One point twenty-one gigawatts, Tevin Tech. Ooh. Plugging it back in. Crossing fingers. Oh. Oh. Okay. Now we have one working. Oh, okay, okay. There's the other one. It picked up. Software. Where's our controller? It just worked. It was just working. You saw that it was just working, right? You saw all of this. It was just working. It was. I, I, I actually am really impressed that I got it to do that. Okay. 
Watch. Sleep. Oh, is, is the is Sleep. the here uh, that one quote from that one TV show? You know, have you tried turning it off and on again? <laughs> it just works. I appreciate all the falls and the subs today. You guys are freaking amazing. Love you guys. Okay. Sometimes that works. And all you needed to do was shut down. But I know that controller's defective, so it is a huge pain in my butt. But I had to find one to show you what can happen. Let's go back. Okay. Okay. Software should have loaded because, hey, it's there. All right? Because we know one of them's working. Do the wiggle dance? I know, seriously. But can you ask them to make the fan box to say TT box or something in the device? Man, You know, I asked them that so many times ago that they couldn't update it. It says RGB box, right? Actually, box, I think, really likes this. I remember bragging to it about him or bragging about it to him. Um, another thing, too, rescan does not find the controller. Rescan will not find the controller. You will not have this help you. Reset will do nothing but reset the ports, okay? This has nothing to do with finding the controller. It has everything to do with what you had in here. And like, for example, if you didn't have anything in five and then you plug something into five and then you go to find it and it doesn't work, you click rescan, it'll refind it, okay? That's all that this does though. It does not rescan the code. There's no hard reset software option in the software. The only way to do it is to unplug the power from the controller. Okay? All right. Okay, okay, okay. So we're stuck. How do we fix this? Where's our controller? What do we do? Now, one thing to understand here in this scenario is that controller two was working, not controller one. Controller one's directly plugged into the system. Why is that one not working? And only two, right? Yes, please, Mike, make it work. I need my RGB. So now we've plugged two in directly. So two is now one. In a way, we just didn't change the dip switch, but now I have just that plug directly into the USB header in here. Now we're gonna use our link cable. By the way, this is the bad link cable. And Janny, thank you very much for that hashtag. Hydrate, RGB spice of pump it spice. All right. And right here, you can see, right here, you can see that the issue was not the OS. The issue was not the software. The issue was not the controller, but the link cable. What I did was I reversed the cable on this. So now two is one and basically one, which is kind of hard is four is now two. But as I swapped it i can understand now that it's not the control well the controller does have a problem but i isolated down what the problem is the problem is is that the daisy chain port does not work and the reason why i know this is because now i'm not daisy chaining from the second controller i'm daisy chaining from the first controller so that tells me the output on the first one is bad where the input is fine, or it should be fine. I mean, you can change out the daisy cable chain cable first and foremost 
to isolate that out. And then you can just see if it's just a bad cable. I mean, that's an easy one, right? But to find a scenario for you where like the controller's not showing up or whatever, this one in particular was kind of hard to find, but for being able to find something like this, I was just trying my best. But this one had a broken or it has an issue with the daisy chain return on it or the USB is bad. So a lot of times with that, either a single one or even running multiple controllers, I can run into that problem where it works one way, but not the other. And it can get kind of interesting with that. So process of elimination, isolating down to one controller, getting one controller to work is the best course of action. And remember, you don't have to disconnect the USB or you don't have to disconnect the power, just the USB to troubleshoot your software. So your fans are still spinning, even though there's no light. So that way you don't have to worry about your system overheating while you're troubleshooting this live with the system on and everything, right? And again, cable management, do it later. Figure out what's going on with this stuff. Man, that's a lot. Man, that's a lot. There's, and yeah. oh my gosh. And there's, okay. Okay, so one other thing, one other thing. Wiring is crazy, but if you want the options, you got to kind of deal. It's like, I mean, you want a Ferrari, you need to learn how to drive one. I, I want a Ferrari. You need to learn how to drive one. I, I can drive one. I cannot afford one. <laughs> now, for example, this is, um, this is a quad controller. I just removed it. I got an older controller here. Let me see what we're on. Yeah, same. Okay. Let me get these plugged in. Getting power in here. Well, see, that's kind of cool. See, now here's the neat thing is that like, so that controller that I just put in had a different feature set to it. So as you can see, that's in like a wave pattern, which was the last thing that it stored on the controller before it went over. So. What that tells me is that that controller is not being detected because it's, again, it doesn't know what this is. It's an older controller that doesn't work with the newer stuff. So therefore, I mean, ideally this would be rainbow for you because you didn't have it working in the first place, right? But able being able to get this to show up like that and give you an older setup. And, and, and the other thing too to mention is when you look at this, if, if, it, if it's another visual indication that I can give you, only the front is lighting. The middle is dead. The back is dead. The only thing that's spinning is just one ring because this is like a ring plus controller for like the first gen ring fan stuff. It's not like anything from like later and later kind of stuff. So if it did show up, if the controller did show up, then you would have features in here but they would be a lot more limited on certain things that you would have we can go through a variety of scenarios there with this there's like so much more that we could talk about in regards to rgb but i think this is a nice little refresher here for us steve you know just to kind of give a little bit more to everybody um kind of talk about some of the newer stuff some of the newer software and give you guys a little bit more in the troubleshooting going a little bit further on our normal streams that we would do so I hope a lot of this has helped out. We can always switch back to our controller, but don't count this out as the first problem. There's a lot of things that are involved. This is a very, very complex piece of technology. As simple as it is, the way it connects with everything makes it very, very uh, complex with all the different modes and how everything syncs up. But once you get it right, everything should be automatic. And again, if you have certain things that are going wrong, Hopefully features like how to restart the controller, checking your operating system to other features like that can really kind of benefit from this. You're not going to get, you don't want to spend too much time on the wrong thing. Okay. And yeah, if you have other RGB software, it can conflict. 
if you had one set of fans or an AIO that had one software, I always recommend to uninstall that software first before you take out the old cooler to put the new cooler in. So that way the new cooler doesn't boot up to the old software on the first boot and kind of cause like some type of conflicts and everything. It's usually a little bit easier that way, feel a little more comfortable about it. If that helps, at least on the AIO side of things, DIY LCS is definitely a different story in regards to that. And I mean, from stuff like RGB LED strips, like I have my R, G, and B Lumi strips here, always on my uh, shelf in the background. That's synchronized up to my system too. Just the same. I mean, take a look at how even over here on our stream PC, and I load up our software, you can kind of see what I do here where I have my fans, I have my water blocks, my other fans, and then these are my LED strips that I have right here for um, my little cabinet back here. It's, it's actually quite neat how you can link a lot of this stuff up. And then with this, like I don't have the LED strips grouped so I can keep that static RGB while I change all this stuff for demos for you guys. Really kind of highlights the awesome feature of the grouping there. But then at the same time, I can always go in here to this bad boy and uh, yeah, we can, we can do some fun stuff. I can go in and I can click on this and we can do stuff like raindrops and uh, we can change the colors. And I mean, you'll, you'll instantly already start. Is that they select all let's go to, um, let's go to something like radar. Let's go with this light, light blue color like that. And we can change that. And I don't know if you guys can see that very well. Let me speed it up. Maybe that'll show it off in the camera a little bit better. And then I kind of switch back over here like that. And look, see how I got that? You can even see the reflection and everything like that in the behind. And it's like the LED strips, they link together. You could run those in your case just the same. However, you kind of synchronize your stuff up as far as what you want to do, getting that right color and get everything set up. And in this, I think a lot of this, I mean, even for something like that, that I got, I mean, it's an extension cable. Don't really worry too much about the, how everything, you know, as far as making sure you connect A to B and everything, it should work once everything's connected. If it's not, it's usually something simple and you just got to kind of go through the process. All right. All right. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed our extended uh, discussion on RGB. I think it was about time we laid down a little bit more for you and we'll definitely have more coming. If you guys have any specific questions, feel free to reach out to our chat. Oh, and one thing too, I did forget and I said I was gonna mention this. How do you reach out to us if you need even more? All right, so let me go and show you this right here. So I'm gonna bring up Google. Thermal take Zendesk. So if you type in Thermal take Zendesk, you should see Thermal take technology Zendesk right here. You can click on this. This is our direct support page. Here is our phone number. Here is our hours of operation. If you want to check a guide, it's there. If you want to reach technical support, we have that here and warranty claim. So if you don't have a warranty replacement that you need, but you have a question, go to technical support. You can click in here. They're gonna ask you to submit a ticket. This is where a lot of stuff has to start. And oh my God, I can't believe I missed Janie's hydrate. Oh, yeah. I blame it's Steve for that one. Earlier. I'll get that BIOS updated soon, Janie, don't worry. Submit oh, a ticket. What are you talking about? I mentioned it earlier. Oh, I I then I forgot. Um, we need to BIOS update you. We, we might. <laughs> we might need to roll back. <laughs> United oh, no. States. So there's tickets in here for both the US and Canada, as well as Latin America and Brazil. We do have different regions that we support. And this is all that we do here from the US office. Clicking on submitted tickets, gonna bring you over to something like this. Take a few minutes to complete the request here. Is any technical issues with Thermaltake products and software? This is where you guys go. Go through here. We have all the information. We again, so that you can always call us. And um, Stevie, can you can you just we're we're just like where are you we're just, just gonna scooch over a little bit over there a little scooch scooch, and then as you guys can see right here, we also have the chat with us feature where you can go in there and we can go, hey, and then it's gonna ask you for some information, name, email, stuff like that. 
type your message in there and you can start your chat. I think most of you guys know how a lot of that stuff works. We do have that feature. It is fairly new. And then you can go through here as well, ask your questions on the support side of things, or if you wanna do a warranty claim, you've already gone through this process and you basically just want to be able to get a warranty claim for replacing your controller, go through this process right here. We have an RMA request form that you can select on. It's gonna give you a giant white page. It's gonna blind you like it just blinded me right now. And then you can go down here. It's gonna give you all the details, go through this process, and this will be where you'll set all this stuff up, okay? This is the best way to get support for that, minus being able to jump into our, you know, jump into our Discord. We're a community Discord. We are not direct support, but we'd be happy to show you where to go. We might not be able to spend tons and tons of time to troubleshoot right there on Discord. For certain reasons, we can't. And for that, we ask you to go to our direct support page for help, but always understand our Discord's there. And if we can, we'll try to ask, just ask your question. Don't go as anybody there. Definitely don't at everyone because it's not that big a deal. I'm sorry, you're not that important. And above all and everything, remember that there are other people in the community there that don't work for Thermaltake, that just wanna try and help. Their answer might not be the best answer. They might not be right. They might not be wrong. You don't know. It's just like kind of like a virtual form in a way. So you can always go to our support if you want an official answer and you need that help, all right? It's not hard. I know it's tough to reach out sometimes on that, but that's why we got a couple of different options and we hope that stuff kind of helps you, all right? Oh, I think I'm done. Oh my gosh. Woo! That's RGB. That's RGB, baby. And that's, by the way, just TTRGB+. Plus. That's not that's, even 5 volt. We didn't even get to the ARGB stuff. I kind of wanted to, but there's two, there, there's there's so much to do with RGB. And if, if anything, I hope these clips later show and help people that are troubleshooting. We'll be doing more. Um, let us know, though. Is there something we missed? Something you guys would like to see from us or explained a little bit further? Deep dive into something on one specific RGB product. Let us know. We'll be happy to add in some of those segments going forward with our live streams because that's why we're here, guys. We're not here to just play video games, even though we enjoy doing that too, but we're also here to make sure our RGB works as well as having a nice, cool system because, hey, at the end of the day, we're Thermal Take, baby. Cool all your life. And it just works. And then as Steve says, it just works because I he's programmed ah. to say that. All right. We'll see you guys. Can you do the five volt stuff next stream? Um, we have something special in store actually for next stream. So I will look into maybe even adding something in later for that to talk a little bit more on like the comparisons of ARGB. And uh, I'll look to add in that. But next week, next Wednesday, we got something new, something exciting, something big actually. And you'll have Huge. to stay tubed to find out what it is. All right. Check back with us again next time. Thank you so much for all of the subs again, you guys, as well as for all the new people. Hi, welcome to Thermal Take Live. Again, I'm Thermal Mike. That over there is my man, Thermal Steve. We're here every Wednesday, and we're going to be adding more and more to our schedule. So we hope to see you guys on some other streams as well. So stay tubed, and we'll see you next time here from Thermal Take Live.